Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you all how to create a simple and convenient online food ordering website with WordPress. The website you guys are gonna make today looks incredible. It's loaded with tons of features like QR code, delivery drivers, product add-ons. It has everything that you guys need for a successful food ordering website. You guys will also have access to several free food templates to help get you started with your food ordering websites. And we also do have some premium template kits that you guys can download, and I'll talk about this more later in the video. Now this tutorial is ideal for small business owners who want to enable food ordering on their websites without shelling out like a ton of money. And it's also for restaurant owners who just want to accept credit card payments on their website. Now there's a lot to cover in this video. So before we begin, let me show you guys the website and also the features. Then let me show you guys what you're gonna to learn today in this tutorial. All right, so here's the food ordering website I'll be showing you guys how to make today in this video. We also do have other template kits for those of you who are in different niches, and I'll talk more about that later in the video. Now with this website, you guys can accept online booking orders with credit cards, and you guys can also accept reservations on your websites. But before I show you guys that, let me just give you a general walkthrough of the website. So I'll go ahead and scroll down right here. So this is just general content. You guys can change this to pretty much anything, right? You can put like my Thai restaurant and then put like Pad Thai or you know Pad CU there or something like that. And then here we also have QR codes. Now in this video, I'll show you how to fully integrate QR codes. Let me give you an example. All right, so I open up my phone right here and I'll get my camera out, right? And then I'll go ahead and scan this and then I'll click on the link. Now with this QR code, you guys can actually print these out and even put them inside of your restaurant so users can uh, quickly look at the actual menu right here. They can even order directly from the mobile device as well. So right here, I'll click on the add to Greek salad and then you'll see that the product has been added. All right, but before that, let's keep checking out the rest of the website. So here we go. You know, we have just a general upsell where, you know, we're just telling people about our restaurants. And then here's a menu, right? We have just some food products where we have the title, the price, some description, and then we have an image of the actual product, right? And then we'll go ahead and scroll down here. And then obviously this is just like general upsell. So this can be anything, right? Like 50% off all drinks or all food or you know whatever. And then right here we have a booking form. Uh, for example, right here, users can actually book based off dates. They can also book based off time. Now what's also really unique and cool about this is uh, this can actually uh, pick specific seats in the actual restaurants. So for example, let's say I want to book at uh, uh, 3 p.m., right? You guys can obviously set the times here and then we'll do 3 p.m. to like, I don't know, 4 p.m. And it's me and my girlfriend. So we're gonna go ahead and sit right here. No, I'm sorry, S sit right here and also right there. And they can go ahead and fill this information out and then you can accept reservations on your website. So I really do like this, this layout right here. It creates a visual experience for your customers and I think that's really cool. And I'll show you how to set all this up in this video. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down here. We have some testimonials. We have some uh, let's eat banners and that's our footer here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and go back up here to the website. So now I'll show you guys the actual process of people purchasing orders on your website. So let's go over here to our main menu. Let, let's, uh, let's show you how to, how to buy something. Here we go. We have Greek salad, you know, chicken nuggets, a salmon steak, and whole chicken. And you just can just add these to the cart right here. And on the right side, it'll show you that these have been added to their cart. But let's just go ahead and click on one just to give you a visual here. So this is one of our food products. And as you can see, these are premium chicken nuggets and we can offer the prepping time and also the delivering time. These are optional. You guys don't have to have this if you don't want. You guys can also offer add-ons, right? So if you want French fries, or ranch dressing, or you wanna make it a combo, uh, you can add these add-ons to your products and then users can actually click on add to cart. And then right here, it has been added to the cart. And if we click on the actual cart, this will actually show the users what's inside of the cart. They can also apply coupon codes. So for those of you who wanna have sales, you can apply coupon codes right here uh, for your actual restaurants. And then right here, we have the delivery option and also pickup. Now with delivery and pickup, you guys can also set the specific times and dates uh, for delivery or pickup as well. So right here, I'll click on delivery and I'll click on checkout. All right, and next we have the checkout and here we have pickup and delivery. Now this is optional, but you guys can set the delivery date and time. Uh, you guys can also restrict this to time only or even date only uh, if you choose to do that, right? But for delivery, I'll just say, you know what? Uh, on Monday, we're gonna have a big lunch 
So I'll go ahead and put in uh, 12, 12 o'clock, right? You guys can also restrict the times. So you see here how this is in the morning. Uh, you guys can restrict it to your opening hours only. So for example, they can only order from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. or something like that. And then right here, if we scroll down, you can see that users can actually pay with cash. So if you want to just only accept cash on delivery, you guys can enable that. You guys can also accept real life credit cards. So for example, if you want users to pay with credit cards, which I think most of you might want to, uh, we can go ahead and enable that option here. You guys can also uh, have the option for tips. So if you guys want to have a percentage or a flat rate, like a $5 flat rate or a percentage, you guys can put that here. You guys can also set the increments for the actual tipping. So if you want like a 20% mandatory tip or something like that, uh, you can adjust the tip with the flat rate and also the percentage and I'll walk you guys through that later in the video. But uh, right here, we'll go ahead and put in a demo credit card. All right, this is not a real card. I just wanna show you guys the actual, and this will actually save their credit card on your website so they can uh, purchase again on your website without having to see their card number and entering everything in again. $100 so we'll go ahead even, and click on you know, place $300. Order. All right, cool. So now we're about so to our checkout tell... page. And here you guys can see the order details, the email, and all the information uh, for the actual uh, customer. So they'll show their, oh, do you guys hear that? That is actually an order that's gonna notify the actual driver that an order has to take place. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go over here to our ShipDay account. Now, every time you guys get an order, you guys can actually notify your customers when the order has left. You can also assign specific orders to drivers. Uh, over here, we have our driver, and this is our current uh, order that we have just received. Here you can see the order cost 145, right? And it's about 10 miles from our location. And we can go ahead and uh, send out this order right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on, this is ready for pickup. Now let me go ahead and show you guys the actual driver experience and also the customer experience of how they will receive notifications for their orders. So here we go. Right now I am the driver and I just received the order from the actual website. You can see here how it costs 145. I'll go ahead and click on accept here. And then you can see in the portal how this has been changed to started, right? And once the actual order has been completed, they can put mark as picked up, right? So we have now picked up the actual food, right? And uh, right now it's on its way. Now your customers will also get text message notifications notifying them of the status of the order. And they'll also get a GPS tracking where they can visually see where the driver is. Let me show you guys. So here we go. You can see here how it just got a text message from the actual website. And I'll go ahead and click on this actual link right here. All right, cool. So here you guys can see a location of me, right? So I have a GPS tracker where the actual person can see exactly where I am. Now, obviously right now I am in Asia, so uh, it does look a little far, right? Like 600 hours, but obviously you guys would be doing business locally, not, you know, countrywide. So uh, it would show the location of the driver where he is and all that information. Also right here, users can actually send a text message to the driver. They can also call the driver. They can also see the status updates, right? Like on the way, uh, picked up and so on and so forth. So now let's go ahead and go back to the actual app for the driver and confirm the actual drop off. All right, so right here, I'm gonna mark this as complete. And now I have to do a signature, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and sign this out. We're gonna go ahead and sign my signature here and we're gonna save it. And then we will also complete the order. All right, awesome. And then here you can see that the order just disappeared. It just disappeared because it is in the recently completed section with the rest of the orders. So here you can see a list of all the orders. And then right here, we can actually click on the order number and get all the information. So we can see uh, who this was delivered to. We can see where it was picked up from. And then also right here, we can see the proof of delivery as well. So it has the signature. So if users try to charge back the bank or something like that, uh, you guys will be protected with the proof of delivery. Next, let's talk about locations and reservations. So for those of you who are on a more of a large scale, right, where you have multiple restaurants, you guys can actually uh, create multiple locations, right? And every location will have its own specific menu. For example, right here, I'll click on the Miami location. And here you can see we have a brief description and then we have the items that are only available in the Miami location. And I'll go back here and I'll click on LA. 
Now you guys can see that there are different food options. Now, of course, you know, you're going to have a menu much larger than two items or three items, but I just want to demonstrate here how you guys can select specific locations and then also add a specific menu uh, for those locations as well. So that's a pretty cool feature. Now let's talk about the last one, which is the actual reservation form. So right here, I'll click on reservations. Like you guys saw earlier, you guys can uh, create a really nice reservation form, but here I dedicated a page to it. So, uh, you know, you guys saw this earlier right here where we can uh, select times and stuff like that and you know, whatever. You guys can adjust all this in the options like the times and the dates and you can restrict specific dates and times. And then again, users can just go ahead and click here and they can go ahead and put in their information and then you can go ahead and confirm the booking on your end. So I'll go ahead and click on book a table and then I will click on confirm booking. All right, cool. Now, once you guys actually make an order or even a reservation, your customers will be notified via email about their uh, booking. And if they made an order, they will get a purchase receipt. Now let's go ahead and show you the back end of this website and show you all how it works. All right, so here is a little dashboard of the actual website. And here you can see we have the reservations, we have reports, we have the total sales, refunds, and also new customers. You guys can also check between like food ordering and reservations and also, you know, check the times and dates of uh, when you actually receive the orders just so there's no confusion. But let me just go ahead and show you guys the actual settings right here. So it's pretty simple, right? Here we can select a mini cart and there's a few mini carts to pick from. Uh, you can enable live ordering, right? Where you can enable notifications. You can even have sounds on your website, but I don't recommend doing that. And then also you can enable tipping. Like I showed you guys earlier, you guys can select a percentage or even a fixed amount on your websites. Here you guys can also offer discount codes. You can have special menus. This is essentially for people who wants to uh, have like a secret menu where they have to find it only through a pop-up or something like that. And then over here we have pickup where you can select a specific schedule. So for example, you know, we're open Monday through Friday and uh, we start at around uh, 10 o'clock and we, you know, we go home at uh, 10 p.m., you know? And then you guys can add this so users can only pick up between these specific times. And the same thing goes for delivery. You guys can also uh, set the specific uh, time and dates for deliveries as well so you guys have full control over your website. Now, obviously there's a lot more settings here, but I'll walk you guys through more of this later in the video. Let me go ahead now and show you guys the drag and drop builder that we're gonna use in the video. So here we go. Let me go ahead and show you guys the actual builder. So this is a drag and drop builder and you guys can simply just take elements right here and then just drag them into pretty much any part of the website. So you see that blue line right there, we can just go ahead and drag it. And then also you guys can change like the location. If you guys want to adjust the text, we'll put barbecue food, you know, Something like that. And then we can scroll down here and just keep designing the rest of the website. So uh, the barbecue place, you know, if this is a Thai restaurant, we'll just put my, you know, the Thai place. And then over here, you guys can obviously change the images to like a Thai style or something like that. And over here, we can always go ahead and drag and drop elements, right? So for example, if you guys want a text below this image, we can just throw in some text. And then also if we want to throw in a button here, we can, you know, throw in a button. If you guys wanted to add a little video right here to demonstrate your restaurant, we can take this video tab and just drop it in. Really simple, drag and drop, really easy to use. After probably 10 minutes of using it, you guys will be professionals. So this is done with a fully uh, built drag and drop builder that just makes it really easy to build your website. So even if this is your first time making a website, you guys will have no issues, right? Let's say for example, you know, we wanna just take this and put it there and then take this one also and swap it. It's that simple, right? So I'll show you guys a step-by-step -step on how to build this website with this drag and drop builder. So party people, I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw in this part of the video. This tutorial is the complete package for online food ordering, right? It has a really simple to navigate food ordering system. You guys can accept reservations and you can also keep your customers notified on exactly where their food is. So as you guys can tell, there's a lot you can do with this website. It's loaded with features and the developers constantly add new features and updates to this product so you guys can expect more as time goes on. I also do wanna note that this is the most affordable way to build your uh, food ordering website. The plugin itself is a free plugin. However, the pro version offers a lifetime plan and that is much cheaper than your alternatives like toast.com where they'll charge you around 165 per month plus transaction fees 
or websites like Upserve, they'll charge you a minimum of $99 plus, and that is a monthly service. So in this video, you guys will only be paying a one-time lifetime payments, and that gives you access to the plugin and all future updates. So it is one of your most affordable ways uh, to build a food ordering website. So we're gonna build your website in five simple steps. And step one, we'll get your domain and web hosting. A domain is the web address for your website, like myfoodwebsite.com, and web hosting will make sure your website is hosted online 24 hours a day. In step two, we'll import a pre-made template. I'll first be showing you how to import a pre-made template to get you started. There are several food templates to choose from, and I also have some premium templates for those of you who really want a nice looking website. In step three, we'll install the food ordering plugin. We will be using a free plugin to create your food ordering websites. With this plugin, you can create food products, reservations, and also accept credit card payments on your websites. In step four, I'll talk about the pro version. I'll introduce you all to the pro features of the plugin. The pro version costs around $49. I also do have an exclusive discount that you guys will only find on this YouTube channel as well. In step five, the advanced features. After we configure your website, I'll introduce you all to the advanced features. These features include GPS tracking for your drivers so customers can see where they are, SMS notifications where you can update your customers on the status of the food delivery, and also keep them informed about when the food was sent and also when it has arrived. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to step one, which is to purchase fast cloud web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now I've been recommending namehero.com for years and people love it. Uh, this week alone, I've had zero downtime with Name Hero, so you guys will have a reliable website. And also, my websites load at under one second with Name Hero. So we do test these servers to make sure that you guys do get the best web hosting possible. Now, once you guys are here, you'll click on Get Started Now, and then it'll bring you to four different pricing options. So we have the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. Now, I personally recommend the Plus Cloud if you guys are just getting started out, like if you're just getting your feet wet for the very first time. But for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, I would definitely go with the Turbo Cloud because with the Turbo Cloud, you guys do get the new NVMe storage, which does just give you a little bit more performance with your website. So you'll go ahead and pick a package that works best for you and your budget. And then once you guys uh, figure your package out, you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, and here you're going to enter in your domain name. So this is the name of your new website. So. Uh, portfoliowebsite.com or you know mynewswebsite.com or whatever whatever niche that you're building you'll go ahead and put it here so i'll just put it in tutorial domain onecom and see if that's available all right cool it's available now i know it takes time to figure out the domain of your website so you know give it some time you know it, it does take some thought for your new websites uh, once you guys figure it out you guys will click on continue all right, cool. So next we have the billing cycle and we have three years, two years and one year. Now, personally, I'd recommend one year. You guys do get a large discount and this does give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. However, if you guys are feeling very confident, I would recommend going with the two or three year plan. You guys do get the uh, deal the longer you sign up for. So uh, it really depends on your budget. But uh, once you guys select a billing cycle, we'll scroll down. And uh, I don't recommend any of these upsells personally. You can do this with free plugins. So yeah, you guys don't need those. And then we do get a free SSL with Name Hero. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once you guys select your billing cycle, we will then click on continue. All right, next we have the domain configuration. Now I personally recommend the ID protection guys. This will protect your personal information from spammers and people trying to sell you SEO packages and Viagra and all sorts of nonsense. Whenever you guys get those weird emails in your inbox, it's generally because they found your domain online. So this will actually protect you so you don't get spam in your inbox. So go ahead and click on ID protection and then click on continue. And look at that, for a year of hosting, you're paying less than $100, you're paying only 70 bucks. You guys can also go the cheaper routes and get the cheaper plan if you're on a really tight budget. But I think this is a great deal for web hosting for the entire year for this specific performance. So you guys are getting a reliable and a fast server for this price, so it's definitely worth it. So uh, go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. Now you're gonna go ahead and fill out your billing information here, so your first name, your last name, uh, additional information. You'll put in your password and also a support pin. So this would be the pin that uh, they would use to verify that it's you. And then also we have uh, payment methods, so you can pay with PayPal, Coinbase, which is cryptocurrency, and credit card. Here you'll go ahead and put in your payment details 
And if you guys do want to get their spam or their emails, they actually send some pretty good emails, guys. I'm not gonna lie, they have some cool uh, promotional offers. You'll go ahead and check that box. And then you'll, of course, uh, agree to their terms of service, right? I'm sure you guys are all gonna read uh, this here, right? You guys are all gonna read this. I don't think anyone ever reads any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, you'll go ahead and uh, check the terms of service. And once you guys have checked out, I will meet you guys in the customer portal. All right, and welcome to your new dashboard. So this is your current dashboard. As you guys can see, I had many different packages, many domains, and I also have tickets with Name Hero, and they really helped me out with all of my problems. So this is just your interface. On the left side, you can see your hosting packages. These are your current domains. You can always register a new domain. Uh, also billing. So if you wanna see your payments or you wanna add funds or you wanna adjust your payment methods, you can do that here. And also the support. So if you guys run into something weird, I know with websites, things just kind of get weird sometimes. Uh, you guys can always open a ticket here and they will help you out with all of your problems. And they are pretty fast. I mean, I think maybe under one hour, they can help you guys with all your problems. So once you guys are here, let's go ahead and install WordPress onto our new domain. You'll first click on My Cloud. Now here we have hosting packages. Now you should probably only have one here. So just go ahead and click on your hosting package. And next we're going to see this login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on login to cPanel. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and install WordPress onto our domain. So up here, we'll type in WordPress. Here we go, we have WordPress Manager by Softaculous. We'll click on this. All right, and from here, we're going to install WordPress. You guys can see I have many installations of WordPress already, but right here, you'll click on install. And now we're going to look for the domain that we purchased. So right here, you have the choose domain section. So you'll probably see your domain that you purchased. I'll just go ahead and select this one, but you're going to select the domain that you purchased. And for the protocol, make sure this is HTTPS which is the SSL. Now for indirectory, make sure nothing is here. All right, I don't know why that's there by default, but oops, <laughs> whoops. But uh, make sure nothing is there because that will install your domain onto like yourwebsite.com slash something and you don't want that there. It, it, yeah, just don't have that there. Make sure, that's, make sure that's empty. Now for the admin username, go ahead and give yourself an admin username and a password. And this is what we are going to use to log into the website. So whenever you wanna build your website, you're going to use these login credentials. So make sure you write these down. I'll just put admin. Never put pass guys. Uh, make sure this is something unique. I'll just put uh, paddywhack. And your admin email. Make sure that this is an email that you have access to because when you forget your password, they will send this information to your email. So I'll put in my, my Gmail account here, my famous PC hoarder, which I do get tons of spam. And below that, you can always select your language. We can always adjust the language as well uh, inside the WordPress dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. And we're gonna keep scrolling down here to the bottom. They have these other themes they want us to use, but uh, we're not gonna use these. And right here, you'll click on install. Yeah, they said three to four minutes. That was not three to four minutes, right? Now here we have install WordPress, and this is the administrative URL administrative URL. So just go ahead and click on this link, and this will log you in to your website. All right, and this is your new WordPress dashboard. So this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you wanna see what your website looks like right now, up here at the top left, you'll click on visit sites. And this is your new WordPress website. It's using a default WordPress theme, but not to worry, it will make it look really good. So let's go over here back to our dashboard. Now, before we go on any further, we need to adjust some of the general settings in WordPress. So right here, let's click on profile. Here we can adjust the color scheme of the back end. So when you're working on your website, you might want to adjust it to, you know, fit your criteria or whatever you like. I like midnight. I think this one's like the easiest one to see on the eye. You can see that. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. Now, if you guys ever want to change your password in the future for your website, you'll just go ahead and, uh, you know, you'll put it in right there. And then also, if you guys do want to enable a new password for your website to log in, you'll go ahead and set it right there. I'll show you guys how to log into your website in just a bit but uh, this is where you can adjust the password. And then once we're done, we'll click on update profile. All right, cool. Now over here under settings, let's click on general. Now, for those of you who speak various languages or you want to see your website in a specific language, they have tons of different languages you guys can pick. Uh, I mean, it pretty much has every language out there. So, so uh, yeah, you can uh, set your specific language. You can also select the different date format and time format if you choose to do that. 
But uh, yeah, these aren't that important, but uh, I'm just showing you guys. So here we go. Let's click on Save Changes. Lastly, we're going to go over here and click on Permalinks. Now you want to change your permalink to post name. And the reason why we do this is because when you go to a website, it says like your website.com slash about us, right? Or dash contact us, not like the date, the number and all this like dribble, you know? So make sure it's selected to post name and then click on save changes. All right, cool. Now let's go over here and click on dashboard. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is how to log in and log out of your WordPress website. So you guys can pretty much work on your website from any location. Uh, up here where it says, how do you go ahead and click on log out. Here we have our website. And you guys notice that I can't log into my website. You'll go to your domain and you'll type in dash WP dash admin like that, and then press enter. This will bring the login screen. This is where you're going to enter in your username or the email that you guys used to sign up with. And also the password that you guys created in the previous section. So for example, I'll just go ahead and uh, put in my username, password, remember me and then I'll click on login. All right, cool. So there you go. We are now logged in back to our WordPress websites. All right, cool. So you guys got your domain and hosting. Congratulations. Now in this next section, we're now going to import a pre-made template that we're going to use to build your websites. There are a few to choose from. I know people watching this might have different food niches. So uh, there are many to choose from. I also do have some on my website. So let's take a look at those templates and then we'll go from there. All right, so now that we just did the general settings, now let's make our website look nice and add images and use the page builder and all that stuff. So over here, let's go to appearance and click on themes. And for the uh, theme section up here, we'll click on add new. Now, for those of you who have no idea what themes are, let me quickly explain what a WordPress theme is and what it does. First, let's talk about what is a WordPress theme. Every website you make with WordPress requires a specific WordPress theme. Without getting too techy, a WordPress theme is a general style and layout of your current website. Each WordPress theme has different options in the theme customizer. The options can range from a header and a footer builder, different blog post layouts, controlling the width of your website like a blocks or a full width, or specific e-commerce features like product layouts or different shop page layouts. A WordPress theme generally controls the layout and style of your current WordPress website. A WordPress theme does not build the website itself, but it's more of an outside shell for the page builders and a starting point to build your WordPress website. Feel free to check out many of the WordPress themes to find a style that fits for you and your WordPress website. You guys got that? So the WordPress theme essentially controls various parts of the websites. Um, every theme is different, but a majority of these themes, a lot of them do the same function now, because again, the page builder is doing a majority of the work. But the theme that we're going to be using is called Astra. It's actually right here uh, under search themes. You guys can just type in Astra. And this is the theme that we're going to be using. It is the most popular free theme out there. Uh, it's very basic. It controls the header and footer and also it comes with tons of templates. So it's ideal for pretty much anyone getting started. So right here, you'll see this install button. Click on install. Alrighty. And then you'll click on activate. Here you'll see that uh, it wants us to, uh, you know, get started. Let's just click on that button, get started. What this does is that this actually installs the starter templates that we can use to uh, build our websites. Here we go. Now really quickly, before we go on any further, I just wanna show you guys where to access that just in case that didn't appear for you. Over here under appearance, you'll see the Astra options. Uh, here, it'll say install importer plugin and then also it'll say like C library. All right, so just make sure that it clicks on or you click on the import plugin and then it'll say a C library right here and it'll take you right back to the same place. All right, so let's go ahead and skip this little intro video and click on build your website now. Here we have three different page builders. We're gonna be using Elementor. For, it integrates really well with the plugin that we're gonna be using. So select Elementor and uh, the theme actually offers tons of different uh, template kits. Now, uh, some of these are pro and some of these are free. The ones that are free don't say the premium, right? You can see that. But uh, what we can do up here is just type in food. And this will give us a list of available templates that we can use. Now, I also do have template kits on my website that I'll be introducing. But uh, for now, we can just use a free one. We don't need to use a premium one. These right here are all premium uh, template kits. So we don't need to get started with those. So for example, these ones right here, this one's free, this one's free, free and free as well. And there are a load of free themes that we can use. The one that we're going to use right here is called the uh, barbecue restaurants. 
I believe also there are more that you guys can choose with by uh, clicking on business and going to restaurant. And this will display uh, a little bit more, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot more here actually. So uh, yeah, go ahead and click on restaurant and then you will get uh, access to a lot more templates. But we're gonna be using the uh, barbecue restaurant for this video. You guys can always switch back between templates. Don't worry about it. You guys can completely erase and then start out with the new kits. But just to get started, let's just click on the uh, barbecue restaurant here. Now here you guys can insert a logo. So if you guys do have a logo for your uh, restaurant, you guys can go ahead and upload it here. I'm gonna go and upload my uh, logo here just for total purposes. So I'll click on upload file and I'll select this little uh, Kopi Coffee logo. This is actually a website I'm working on. If you guys wanna see it, just go to kopicoffee.com. It's a really cool uh, website we're working on. So here's my logo, right? We got Kopi Coffee. And again, this can be any, you know, this can be any logo, but I'm just pretending that this is my business. So you'd wanna go ahead and upload your business logo here. If you guys need a logo, don't worry about it. I'll show you guys where you guys can get a really cool uh, logo for your website. Uh, we can also adjust the logo width. You can see that we can adjust it. I'll leave it at uh, 100, why not? And then I'll click on continue. Here you guys can adjust the color format of the actual website. So this is the website and you guys can actually pick a color scheme that you might think will you know work with your websites. For example, if you guys are using like a, uh, I'm sorry, building a like nutrition website or a uh, vegetable website, you know, green is more ideal, but uh, orange is more for like barbecues and stuff like that. So I'm gonna stick with the orange color and here are fonts that we can pick with as well but uh, I do like the Poppins Lado. I think Poppins Lado is a really good font. So I'll click on that and then click on continue. Here you guys can choose to subscribe to their newsletter, but uh, I don't want to. So I'm just going to click on submit and build my websites. And as of right now, they're going to start importing the demo content. So just give it like one or two minutes. All right, so there we go. Our website has been imported right here. We'll click on view your website. And voila, this is your new WordPress website. So uh, yeah, you just wanna make sure you scroll down here, make sure the image is imported correctly and everything looks great. As you guys can tell, I think this website looks really, really nice. Everything imported correctly. So uh, yeah, we have now imported a pre-made starter website on our new WordPress website. All right, now before we go on any further, let me give you guys a five minute crash course on how to use this drag and drop page builder. It's really simple. Up here at the top, you'll see this edit with Elementor. This is the actual page builder that we use to design and customize the website. So go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this little navigator. Now here on the left side, we have elements, right? And we can drag and drop these elements anywhere we want on the actual website. For example, let's say we wanna add in a text module. I'll put in a little text module right here. And then here we have additional tabs, right? We have the content, the style, and then the advanced tab. The content will change the actual content of the elements. The style tab will change the topography and the color, and the advanced will actually change the position of the actual uh, element. So let's just uh, let's just let's just do a little test run here. So for example, like the best steaks here, I'll put uh, best steaks in Nashville, right? Best steaks in Nashville. Now here we have like a quick tab right here where we can align it. So I'll go ahead and align that into the middle. Yeah, we can't see it well. So we need to change the color. So for the style here, for the text color, I'll just change that to white, right? And then also we can change the topography here. Now when we installed Astra, like when we first started, it actually, um, you know, imported some demo fonts for us. But you guys can change this to any font that you guys would want right here with this font family. And there are tons of fonts to choose from. I personally like Poppins Bold. I think Poppins Bold is a really nice font. It's just really friendly, you know, like best steaks in Nashville. I just, I don't know, I really like that font. And then also uh, we can add in like a text shadow, which is essentially like a small little shadow behind it just to add emphasis to the text, right? And then we can just go to the website and adjust everything as needed. So this can be like my new uh, restaurant, right? Or no, my new food ordering restaurants, right? And I spelled that wrong. So right here, I can actually right click. Hold on, rest, here we go, rest. There we go. And then also we can just keep adding in more elements. So if you wanna add in like an icon above this, we can drag and drop an icon. 
And then we can, you know, change the style of that and the color right here to pretty much anything. But let's say, for example, I want to get rid of something. Uh, right here, we have this pencil icon. I'll right click and I'll delete that. Now we can also duplicate elements as well. So for example, if you like this right here, or let's say you like this, I'll right click and I'll duplicate that. And now I want to drag and drop it, right? So I can hold this and I'll drag it up there like that. So as you guys can tell, the builder is very fluid. It's really simple to work with. And then also let's say, for example, you know, you guys want to add in your own images, right? Obviously you don't want to be using uh, all these demo images. We can just go ahead and click on the elements tab and then I'll just drag and drop an image here, choose the image. And now you're going to upload your images right here under the upload files where you guys can go ahead and select the images that you guys want on your websites. However, I also do want to mention that they actually have a free API that works with Pixabay. So over here, I'll uh, type in food under the free image tab. Here we have safe search because, you know, sometimes there's like provocative models that, you know, might get you busted at work. <laughs> so just make sure you have a, a safe search on just for your own protection, right? And then right here, I'll just like, I don't know, I'll insert this like uh, the salad or something like that, right? We got the salad and uh, over here, uh, over this section, I'll insert another image, right? And this one, I'll uh, see, we've got some burgers over here, you know, put some nice bur delicious burgers. Ooh, that one looks really good. All right, so we can just, you know, insert an image here. Uh, I'll just insert uh, this burger bacon, right? And there you go. Now you guys might be uh, looking at this and saying, well, you know, that looks nice, but the background doesn't really work well. Here we have these, uh, th this column up here at the top, right? And let's say, for example, you guys want to adjust the background of this specific section. Every element tab has these dots, right? These dots are referring to the actual section where you can add in a background or a specific color. So for example, for this little, oh, the dots disappear sometimes. That happens sometimes, you know, sometimes it's weird. If this ever happens to you, you guys can actually just right click here and click on edit section. And then it's the same exact options. So here under the style section, I can choose to get rid of this image, right? And I can add in something else, right? So I can either just put in like a basic color, I can put in my own image, but I'll just put in like a basic color, you know? Now here is the background overlay. Uh, there is a overlay here. So for the color, I want to get rid of this overlay, right? And something like that, right? So uh, yeah, that's how you guys can adjust the background. Now let's say, for example, you guys just want to get rid of this section. Well, here at the top right here, there we go. I can just click on the X. The X will actually just get rid of the entire area altogether, right? But let's say, for example, you want to add in a section between this section, right? Maybe you want to add in a section in between this section and in between this section. Let me show you how to do that. Here we have the plus section. If we click on the plus, you will then see we have these three little tabs. This right here enables us to add in columns. So for example, I'll put in a three column row right here. And now you see that we have this three column row. And then we can go ahead and just drag and drop elements. So for example, this will be an image. Click back over here. This will be a heading text. And then I'll click back over here again and this will be a button, right? Pretty simple. And of course, we can go ahead and duplicate these, right? And drag and drop it, you know, or, you know, you can, you can do what I just did here. You know, I'm just showing you the shortcut. This is the lazy way, <laughs> you know? So uh, we can just right click and duplicate. And then the next thing over here as well, we'll just do the same thing there. All right, cool. Now uh, let's say, for example, you wanna add an image here, right? So we can use some of the actual default images they gave us, right? All right, and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll just throw in some random image. These are all demo images that were imported automatically when we imported the starter websites. And then this can be like, uh, you know, fresh. What is this? Is this a chicken wings? I think they're chicken wings, right? They look like chicken wings, right? Fresh chicken wings. Yeah, there we go. Fresh chicken wings, right? And then I can center align this. And then also for the button here, I also do want to center align the button. Now, let's say, for example, you want to add a link. So this would be the link, right? So this would be going to your actual menu page or you can go to any page you want. Now, later in the video, I'll be showing you guys how to uh, create products. But uh, for now, I'm just showing you that you can link this to anywhere you want on your websites, right? All right, so now that we've done that, let's talk about one more option. Let's say you guys want to add padding. And this is a very important option. Here you can see that there's a lot of space right here. 
Yet over here by this button, it's it's really close, you know, it's it's too close to the bottom. So let's add space. So to add space to any element, you'll just go over here. I'll click on this column because you can see that this column right here is controlling this section. And I'll go to the advanced tab. Now here we have padding, we have top, right, bottom, and left. So right here, I'll click on the link values together, which allows us to unlink these. So I wanna add padding to the bottom here. So for the bottom space, I'm gonna add in some padding. You can see here how now it's actually pushing the actual padding there, see that? So now it's creating space uh, below that button. And you can do this for pretty much every single element, right? So if you feel like something is too close to something, you can always add padding uh, to that specific part of the actual website. For example, let's say this button, I wanna make it farther away from this text. I'll click on the little pencil icon, the advanced tab, and then up here, I'm gonna add padding to the top. So you can see here how I'm pushing it away from the actual elements. So when you build your websites, just make sure that you guys do add some parts of padding to make sure that the website looks uh, good. Now, let's say for example, you know, we have, you know, we've, we know what to do here. Let's just get rid of this, you know? I can just click on the X, and then we're back to square one. So that's how you guys can use the actual page builder to build out parts of your websites. Now I do have a tutorial on this page builder that goes in detail, that's about an hour and a half long. I will leave that video in the description below of this video. But for this video, we're gonna be focusing more on the food ordering aspects. And uh, if you guys do wanna check out that other video, I highly recommend it. But the builder itself is very simple to use. And after probably like 15 minutes of using it, you guys will get the hang of it. So to save your options or whatever you've done, right here, we'll click on update. And this will actually save all of the work that you've done to your actual websites. All right, so to exit out of the builder, we're gonna go up here and click on the view page. And now you guys can see that all of the changes are live, right? So best stakes in Nashville. And then also we have the little, uh, I guess that's a ribbon or something that we added. And uh, yeah, so that's how you guys can edit your websites. And then whenever you want to edit the website again, you'll simply go back over here and you'll click on edit with Elementor and that allows you to turn the builder back on to start customizing and designing the website. So here is the full Elementor tutorial where this goes in detail and talks about all of the advanced features, um, even the pro version of this page builder. So if you guys do need more help with the builder, you guys can go ahead and check out this video. But you know, the builder is pretty simple to use, right? You guys can tell like it's really simple. All right, cool. So now that you guys got your website up, we're all ready to go to the next step. Now, also, if you guys do want other templates, you guys can switch to the other templates if you guys want to mix and match. Uh, also, we do have templates on our website and we'll constantly be adding more. So be sure to check those out. But now that we have our website and we know how to sort of manage it, we'll now go to the next step and we'll install the food ordering plugin. This will convert your website from a basic WordPress website into a food ordering website. It'll give it more functions and more features. So with that said, let's go back to the video. So now that we know how to use the builder, now let's go ahead and start adding products to our website. Let's go over here to our dashboard. Now we're gonna install two plugins here, all right? Let's go ahead and close these notices. When you guys install plugins, they're gonna get really annoying notices. And my bad, that's just how it works, you know? So right here under plugins, we'll click on add new. And then we're gonna install two plugins. For search plugins, we're first gonna type in WooCommerce. This plugin allows us to create products and also accept credit card payments on our website. And it's completely free. So over here, you'll see WooCommerce. We'll click on install now, and then you'll click on activate. All right, now once you guys install WooCommerce, it prompts you to a setup wizard. However, we just need to skip this setup wizard. We don't need to put any of this information in. We can always come back to this information a little bit later. So at the bottom of the screen, you're gonna see skip setup store details. Go ahead and click on this text right here. And it's your choice if you wanna opt in for their data, whatever. I'm gonna put no thanks. All right, so now that we've installed that plugin, let's install one more. We're gonna go down over here back to our uh, plugins. Let's see, there, plugins, there it is, way down there. And click on add new. And under search plugins, we'll type in WP Cafe. This essentially allows us to turn our website into a food ordering website. This is the plugin that you guys will need right here. It's called WP Cafe. Go ahead and click on install now. And then you'll click on activate. All right, cool. So now over here, you'll see this new WP Cafe tab. So right here, let's click on dashboard. 
So this is your dashboard for your new uh, restaurant, right? So here you'll see reports, you'll see confirmed and canceled uh, reports and all the income that you receive. Uh, here we also have the settings tab. Here you can go ahead and enable a few options. Like for example, we now have a mini cart on our websites. It does come in two different styles. You guys will see that in the very next section once we close this window. You also have some general options here where you can allow location. Here we have uh, reservations as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then also we have style where you can adjust the uh, color of like the menus. And then also we have just general settings, which uh, enables the date and format on our websites. And also right here, we can adjust the language in the calendar language if you guys wanna do that. So let's go back over here to food ordering. All right, now let's go ahead and go back to our website right here under visit sites. And you're gonna notice here on the right side, we now have this little cart, right? However, we have no products yet. So let's go ahead and create some products, which are also items that people can buy on our websites. Up here, we'll go to dashboard. And here we have products, right? So let's first go ahead and create a product. Right here, I'll click on add new. Now this is essentially your menu, right? So whatever you have on your menu, you are now going to create it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a demo product, right? I'm gonna put in something like, uh, we got chicken wings, right? Chicken wings. And then here we have our long tail description. Now let me show you all where this content will display on your products. So this right here is the demo website. If you guys do wanna check this website out, it's in the description below. But here I'll click on main menu. And here you can see that I have my products like I showed you guys earlier. So I'll go ahead and click on this product. And here we have the title, the price, uh, prep time, delivery time. We have the description, right? And then also we have some add-ons, we have some uh, fields, the price, and then also there'd be description here at the bottom. You guys can choose to enable or disable reviews on your website if you choose to do that. But uh, right here, this description will display below the actual product. It'll display somewhere way down here. So it's not imperative that you add it, right? But uh, some things I do recommend is to add product categories. So you do wanna create product categories for all of your food. So for this category, this will be like uh, appetizers, right? Appetizers, a lot of category, right? Now, how much do the chicken wings cost? Well, the chicken wings cost 20 bucks, all right? Pretty expensive, <laughs> you know, but uh, pretty uh, 20 bucks, that's all they're getting, right? And then below that, we have the product short description. Now this short description will display right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this description, right? And this is where you can talk about your actual, you know, your food product, talk about, you know, what it comes with and so on and so forth. Here we have food locations. Now, if you guys have multiple locations, uh, you guys can add a food location right here. Now for this video, I'll be doing this just for tutorial purposes. If you guys don't, you don't need to add nothing at all. But if you guys have various locations, you'll go ahead and add in right here. I'll go ahead and put in Miami. And I will put in the new food location name. All right. And also here we have the product image. So you guys now need to display a image of the actual product, right? So this is the image that represents the actual item that we're you know, creating. So here we have chicken wings, right? We got the chicken wings, right? And also we have a product gallery. Now the product gallery images will display below the actual image just to give users a closer view of the actual product. Now uh, I'm just gonna put in just a demo image here. All right, I'm just gonna you know grab one. I have no idea here. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna grab one. All right. Now also here we have asterisk settings. So I want to adjust some of the settings. Notice over here how there's no sidebar and this is a full width page of the product. I like this format, so I want to adjust it really quick. For the sidebar, I don't want a sidebar. And for the content layouts, we're gonna we're gonna select full width contained. I like that option. And once that's done, I think we're all ready to rock and roll here. We'll click on publish. All right, so here we go. We have the actual uh, name of the actual product. It costs 20 bucks and users can actually add this product to the cart. Here, if they click on add to carts, it'll then show that the product has now been added to their carts. So here your customers can go ahead and purchase your food products on your websites. Now over here on our, our other websites, you can see how this product has prep time, has 
uh, upsells, and also custom fields. Now this is all located in the pro version and we'll talk more about the pro version in step four, but I just wanna get your feet wet here and just start with the basics. So now that we created this product here, let's create one more product. Up here under plus new, you can also create a product, right? So there's two different ways. You can create a product from the back ends or from the front ends. And uh, for the product name, I'm gonna go ahead and close that annoying little notice that comes up sometimes. Uh, for our product name, I'll put in, uh, this is, this will be like a salmon, salmon steak, right? And then below that, I'll go ahead and first set a product image just so we understand what we're working with here. Uh, I'll put uh, this one right here. I think that's salmon, right? Is that salmon? I think in the demo they said it was mackerel, but it kind of looks like salmon. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think that is, salmon or mackerel? I'll set the product image, right? And how much does this uh, salmon cost? Well, I'll put uh, $25, right? 25 bucks. Pretty expensive, but uh, why not? And also we wanna make a new category for that. So make sure that you guys do create a category for all of your products, because then uh, when users are looking for products, uh, they won't be able to find it as easy, right? So this will be like main course. I'll add a new category. And I'll just assume this is also in the Miami location, right? So I'll go ahead and put in some short description here about the salmon steak. I just grabbed it from some random websites. And also for the actual uh, settings right here, I just wanna make sure this is also no sidebar and full width contained. You guys are more than welcome to check out the other uh, styling options for your products if you guys wanna do that. But I'll go ahead and just set that and click on publish. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, product here. I'll click on view products. And there you go. So now we have the salmon steak. Users can click on add to carts and they can go ahead and see what's in their cart. Now there are also various styling options for this cart and I'll show you guys more about that later in the video. All right, so let's just imagine that we wanna now check out. Here we have view cart or the customer can go directly to checkout. I really do like that because it's a more uh, faster and convenient process. And then right here, we can go ahead and put in our billing information and they would put in their address and all that information and they'll click on place order. Now, once this is done, you will get notified that you have a new order. And also the customer will get notified that they have purchased other uh, products and they will get a purchase receipt. But before we go on to this section here, let's now first talk about how to place the products on our website so people can actually see it. Here I'll go to our homepage. And at the top right here, I'll click on edit with Elementor. Now there's a few ways on how to display your products. We can either add it on the websites or we can add it to the shop page. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down right here. And uh, what we're gonna do now is I now wanna add these to our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this little uh, image right here. And also I'll get rid of this one right here. And I'll, now we have this like just one box, right? And on the left side, we're gonna scroll down, just keep scrolling. And you're gonna see this new tab right here called WP Cafe Menu. Here we can display the food list, the menu tab, and also the reservation, and also locations. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop the food menu. And here we go. We have our uh, food menu here, which looks really nice. And there's a few different styles here. We can do style one, style two, and also style three, right? Uh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do style one. That one was looking good. Now, let's say, for example, you guys want to uh, showcase specific food categories here. Like this can be like our best, our best seafood, right? And then here you can display seafood. Under the menu category right here, you can then select the actual uh, categories, right? So this would be the main course. So only the food products and the main course will display right here. That's why you guys wanna create categories for your food. So this can be like appetizers or this can be uh, desserts, right? And then you can say, for example, right here, this can be like our best seafood, right? And then here you can go ahead and display the category of seafood. So that's how you guys can, you know, add in categories and how you can apply them to your website. And there are some other options right here. You guys can choose to show the thumbnail. You can get rid of the item description. For example, if you don't want to show a description of the actual uh, product, you can simply just get rid of it or you can display it. And, uh, you know, or you can choose to hide the price. You know, you can hide the price if you want to do that. But, uh, you know, that's really up to you. So here you have a bunch of styling options that you guys can choose. Also here under the style tab, this is where you can style everything. 
So for example, we have the cart button right here. We can go ahead and design the actual cart button. Uh, here we have like a different color, right? We'll have like a, a white color with like maybe like a red background. You can see here how now it's like a, you know, changing color. So you can fit this to fit your uh, website niche, right? So every single element has styling tabs where you can adjust the style to fit your website. Uh, also here we have some other options like title and this will control the actual title. Uh, for example, I can change this to red, right? And the price, the description, and also advanced where you can adjust the padding and so on and so forth. So that's how you guys can add the food menu to your website and also how you guys can customize it. Now let's say for example, you wanna have a default uh, page where all of your products are propagated automatically. Well, let's do that. Here we have this history tab, right? This is actually a history of everything that you've done. And I just wanna go ahead and go back to history and I'll just go back to where we first added the actual you know, product here, right? Go back here, right? All right, cool, that works. And I'll click on update. That's one way on how you guys can, you know, go back in time and fix things just in case you guys messed up things. You know, that happens all the time. Don't worry about it, no sweat. So let's go back over here to our exit dashboard. All right, now let's say for example, we want to have all of the products displayed on a page, right? And this is also known as a shop page. However, for this website, it'll be referred to as a menu. Here we have the actual shop page. Now, I'll click on view really quick and explain this. When you guys install the WooCommerce plugin, it's going to display a list of all of your products. So here we have the salmon steak, the chicken wings, we have the appetizers, and also the main course. We have the price, and users can also add this to the carts, and then they can go ahead and purchase this actual uh, product, right? So that's where the shop page is. However, we need to sort of change the way it looks, right? Because this is not really a shop. This is a restaurant and we have a menu, right? So let's modify a few things. I'll go back over here and here we have the shop. Let's click on edit. And we're gonna adjust this to hey, our listen. main menu, right? And also for our URL slug, I'm gonna change this to main menu. And I'll click on update. Now we already have a page with the URL of menu. So I actually wanna delete that page just so we don't get confused. Let's go back over here to WordPress. And here you can see that we have a menu right here that was made by Elementor. I'll quickly view this and explain what this is. So this was actually created for us automatically when we imported the actual starter templates. However, I actually wanna get rid of this page. Uh, you guys can actually keep it if you want, but for me, I'm just going to trash it uh, just because I don't wanna get confused between this menu versus the actual menu they imported for us automatically. Now also I put this in the trash. So you guys can actually restore things in the trash. So here we have our menu. You guys can restore this if you guys decide later to use it. All right, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Now I also wanna add our main menu to our current menu, right? So let's go over here to appearance and click on menus. So here we actually got rid of that menu page. So WordPress is telling us now that this is invalid. So we need to get rid of this. So right here, I'll remove this page. And here under view all, we are now going to insert the main menu page. All right, and I'm gonna add it there and I'll rearrange it next to the about us. And I'll click on save. All right, now let's click over here and visit sites. So here we go, we'll click on our main menu and now you can see how this has adjusted to our main menu. So uh, yeah, that's how you guys can apply this to your current websites. And then right here, you guys can add this to the cart and so on and so forth. So that's how you guys can adjust the actual menu to your actual main menu. Now let's go ahead and talk about how to create hey, pages listen. and add them to the menu. And also let's talk about reservations and locations just in case you guys have various locations. So to create a new page, You'll go up here to plus new and click on page. And uh, just for total purposes, I'm gonna put this as locations, right? Locations, I'll click on publish and publish. Now, whenever you guys make a page with WordPress, you always need to assign it to the menu. So for example, if I made this page right here and I just go to our website, you'll see that the uh, page itself has not been added to the menu. So whenever you guys make a page, always add it to the menu. So over here, we'll go to appearance and menu. 
And then for the pages that we uh, we just created, we created locations. I'll go ahead and click on this and add this to the to the actual menu here and just drag and drop it right there. All right. And I'll click on save menu. Now, if we go back to our websites, you will then see the locations page has been added to our websites. Now, let's say, for example, you guys want to design and customize this page, right? Because it's not using the page builder yet. So let's do that. So here I'll click on edit page and then we'll start designing the actual location section. Now, one thing I do want to change here is attributes, right? So I want to make sure that the uh, page attributes here, sorry, not the page attributes, the templates is Elementor full width. I'll click on updates. And then I'll click on edit with Elementor. The Elementor full, uh, full with canvas, it basically uh, makes it full width like this. So here we can go ahead and, uh, you know, design the page as usual. And you guys can choose to add in anything you want here. So for example, for this plus section, you guys can build a page normally, just like you would any other page. But on this specific page, I want to actually add in my locations. So for this title, I'll just put like, check out our new locations. I'll center this. I'll add some padding here to the top, right? And we will go ahead and throw our padding down here and click on update. Now I'm going to add locations here, right? However, I also do want to explain that you guys can also use this as your menu or anything that you want. For example, if you want to turn this into your menus page, you'll just click on the plus and then you'll scroll to the bottom here. And then you'll just throw in like the actual, you know, the food. And then here you can just turn this into your menu, like check out our new menu, right? And so on and so forth. So the great thing about WordPress is that it allows you to get really creative. Like you, you're not limited to anything. I mean, you can uh, think outside the box here. You can make this your new menu page and then you can uh, design it any which way you want. So uh, this is an example of how you guys can, you know, think outside the box here and add a menu or whatever to any part of the website. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and I want to put in locations. So check out our new locations. Now we don't have the locations short code just yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a new tab and we're going to get the short code for locations. So over here, I'll open up the same website. All right. So here we go. I'm going to go over here and go to my dashboard and under WP cafe, you'll see available short codes. Here we have the food menu and you also have filter food by location. Now, if you guys are using different page builders, you guys will need to use the food menu by default to display your uh, products, right? Or your menu. But here we have generate short code. And then here we can go ahead and design this like just as usual, right? And this is pretty much geared for different page builders. Yeah, this is how you guys would get the location for your website. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and generate this short code here, copy this, and then we'll go back to our website here. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that short code. Now there's a few ways on how to paste short codes. You can just type in short code like this, drag and drop it, and then just apply it like that. Next, I'll click on apply. Now uh, here we have select delivery location. So I'm gonna go ahead and display this. I'm gonna go ahead and, sorry, update this. And I'm just gonna explain to you uh, the different styling options. So uh, this is the first styling option, right? And if you guys do have different locations, you guys can select those locations. And then the actual menu uh, will display uh, whatever the menu offers in that specific location. Now, going back over here to filter food by menu by location, you guys can actually adjust this, right? So instead of, uh, or I guess for the free version, they only have style one, but you guys can adjust this to pretty much any other style that you guys want. Now, let me go ahead and add in another location just so that we have more to work with. So over here under dashboard, if you guys do want to add another location, I believe it is under uh, the products, right? And under food locations. So we have Miami, right? But we also want to add in uh, Montana, right? And I will put in another uh, location. And then for the actual products, which is our menu, uh, we can assign these specific products to specific locations. So here we have food locations. I'll click on quick edit right here. And for this one, we're going to put this in Montana, right? And I'll click on update. So what I'm doing here is I'm categorizing the food based off locations. So salmon steak will only be available in Miami and the chicken wings will only be available in Montana. So let's test it out. Let's go back over to our uh, locations. This is actually an option if you guys want to enable in the actual um, general settings, uh, but I'll talk about that in just a bit. 
Here we have locations, and then we can go ahead and pick locations. So for example, our Miami menu, uh, it'll display like the Miami products, and then the Montana menu will display the Montana products. All right, so that's how you guys can filter by locations. There are more features in the pro version, but if you guys like this and this works for you, this is how you can display locations in the free version. Now, really quick, I wanna get rid of that uh, location pop-up. Here under the WP Cafe, if you guys do wanna have that, uh, under the general settings, we can just go ahead and turn that off because that can get quite annoying. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to available shortcodes here. And I wanna click on reservation this time. So let's say, for example, you guys want to enable specific reservations. We can go ahead and do that. So for example, I'll just put in like a style one. Uh, this is an image URL. I'm not gonna do that. So I'll just put style two and click on generate. Here, I'll go ahead and go to visit sites. Now you guys have a few options here. You guys can make a new page for reservations or you guys can just add it anywhere on the page if you decide to do that. But uh, I'll go ahead and make a new page for reservations. So plus new page, and this will be reservations. And all I need to do here is just go ahead and paste in that short code. And that's it, we're done. And for the default templates, I do want Elementor full width here. I'll click on publish and publish. And we can actually just view the page here and just see what's going on. All right, so we might need to use Elementor here because uh, we have some padding issues. You know, it doesn't look, it's too tight to the top. So right here, I'll click on edit page and I'll click on edit with Elementor. All right, now here for the heading text, we're gonna drag that right there and put it above it and then put reservations. And then for the advanced section, we're obviously gonna add some padding here to the top, right? Maybe like 100 or 50 pixels, you know? And then there we go. All right, I'll go ahead and update that. Now you guys can, uh, you know, you guys can influence this, um, I guess you wanna say uh, short code as well. So for example, I'll click on the little pencil here we have style. So the Elementor page builder, it can influence short codes, but it really can't modify them in whole. Let me give you an example. Here for the topography, we can go ahead and change the actual uh, text here. You know, the actual, I guess you wanna say the, the fonts, right? So uh, yeah, that's how you can adjust it as well. You guys can also adjust parts of the size, right? So you see here how Elementor can kind of influence it. However, it can't really fully control it because this is not being uh, this is not part of the Elementor page builder, right? This is actually just a short code, but you can change the topography as well, you know? So that's how you guys can add this reservation form. But before we actually go ahead and allow reservations, we need to actually uh, set the options for uh, what date we want or whatever, because you can see here how we don't have a schedule set. So let's quickly set a schedule for our restaurant. This essentially allows people to order uh, based off of the time, right? So over here, let's go to our settings. And then we have reservation. Here we have our schedule. Here you guys can go ahead and select your actual schedule. So we have the weekly schedule and the everyday schedule. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a weekly schedule here, right? And the start time can be like, we open at around eight o'clock and we close at around 10 PM, right? And then we can go ahead and, um, you know, add in that schedule here and that's pretty much it. So this is how we can add a weekly schedule. I'm gonna go ahead and put all these in right here, just so I don't get any restrictions. We can also, you know, have an exception schedule and there's other various options on the minimum guest numbers and the maximum guests and so on and so forth. And then right here, I'll click on save changes. So that's how we can pretty much add a schedule to our uh, reservations. There are other options right here, like uh, allow cancellations, require phone number. Uh, for the scheduling options, again, we just went through these. There's also the email. So here we have the sender email address. You'll wanna make sure that this is your email. Uh, it also falls back on the default WordPress email, uh, just in case because there's nothing there. And then also you do have some other options here where you guys can go ahead and go through. And then also this is the notification email, which will notify users of a new email. Here you guys can go ahead and design this. So this is the email that sends to a admin when a uh, reservation has been made. So here we have a new reservation request right, a reservation request. And then here you can put in anything that you want and this will go directly to you to notify you that there is a new booking, right? So, hey man, new booking, right? And this is the email that sends to customers. So um, thank you for booking 
with DarylFoods.com. All right. And then here you can put like a thank you so much. And then you would go ahead and put in whatever information you want. This is the actual confirm email subject. This happens when you confirm the email. Uh, it sends, but that's available in the pro version. And it looks like these right here are all just pro features. So I'll just go ahead and skip those and click on save changes. We'll talk again about the pro version in the next section. So that's how we can assign a uh, reservation form to our site. Now let's go ahead and test it, but I want to add it to the menu first. So over here, we'll go to appearance and menus, you know, just so it's just so it's, it looks clean and everything looks good, right? Well, that's to the menu. And I'll put that right there and I'll click on save menu. All right, cool. Now let's go to our website and make a reservation. So let's go to our reservations tab. Here I'll put in Daryl Wilson. Daryl Wilson, it's put my name wrong, duh. <laughs> here we go. All right, and here's a number, all right. And then here's the date booking. So now you can see that the start time is 7 a.m. and the end time is 10 p.m. So I'll go ahead and book from eight to nine, right? Total number of guests, party for one, all right? Party for one. I'll click on book table. All right, cool. Now you can see that we can go ahead and confirm the booking. And there you go. Now you'll be notified via email that a reservation has been made and the customer will also get an email notifying them that they have a pending booking. So here we go. We have the email. Thank you for booking with GeraldFoods.com. And here is the actual a confirmation. And now you will also get an email notifying you of a new booking. So that's how you guys can add reservations to your actual uh, food ordering website. All right, so now let's click on the homepage here. All right, now before we go on to talk about the actual payment processors and the pro version, let's quickly talk about the theme customizer, right? So I didn't really talk about the theme customizer, which is like the header, the footer, and also uh, parts of your actual uh, product page. So let's talk about the theme customizer. Right here, I'll click on customize. Now the theme customizer essentially controls the header and the footer and also various parts of the website, like the actual product page. In our case, the menu, right? So here we actually have the header builder, right? And here we can design the actual header of our website. So for example, we have the logo here. I believe I did enter my Kobe Coffee logo earlier. I might've messed something up or something, but here we go. We have the Kobe Coffee logo. I'll go ahead and insert this logo here, right? I'll crop that image. And then also we can have this for uh, different logos for different devices. And that means like you can have one for Android and one also for uh, iPhone users and stuff like that. So now let's say you guys want to design and customize your actual menu. Here we have the header builder, right? And here, if I click on these pluses, we can go ahead and add an elements. For example, a lot in this cart. This actually shows a price and what is actually inside of the cart, right? So I'll go ahead and drag and drop that over there. And now we have a, a cart menu right there. Now we have this button right here, but I don't really need to add this button, right? But uh, if you guys do want to have like this reservation button where users can click on it and go to the reservations, you'll simply go ahead and click on button and then you'll paste in the link for your reservation page. So for example, this is my reservation page. I'll go ahead and copy this URL right here and then I can paste the URL in like that. So that's how you guys can use the actual button here to navigate users to reservations. Uh, I mean, you can actually take this off the menu and have this as your reservation button. It's really all, you know, all about preference here. It really depends on what you want to do, but I'm just showing you guys the tools on what to do. And uh, let's say, for example, you guys want to add in social icons, right? Here we have some social icons where you can add in like, you know, Behance, Dribble, you know, email, whatever. And then we can drag and drop this over there. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is a, a very simple drag and drop builder. And lastly, if you guys do want to change the color here, I'll click on the gear icon right here. And this is where we can adjust the height, right? Make it really small or compact. And then also we can change the color here. For example, we can have like a black, uh, black color, but then maybe you want to change those to white, right? Design. I think we can change it here. The icon color, change it to white. There we go. Ah, cool. So uh, yeah, that's how you guys can design the header using this, um, I guess you wanna call it the header and the footer builder. And the footer is the same exact way. If you guys wanna design the actual footer, you'll click on this and you can do the same thing for the actual footer as well, if you guys do decide to do that, right? So uh, yeah, that's how you guys can design the actual header and footer. I'm not gonna go through the footer because obviously they're the same exact thing. You'll, you'll just take time to you know try to get used to it and stuff like that. But now let's talk about the actual 
uh, shop page. So here, click on main menu, right? And then here we have these two products. Now, right here, I'll click on WooCommerce. And this is our product catalog page, right? So for the product catalog page, uh, we have a few options, right? Here we have the appetizers, the title, and the price. Uh, if you guys want to add in or show specific information, you can click on the eye, and then that will display specific information. So here we have the short description showing, the ratings, and so on and so forth. If you guys want to get rid of that information, you'll just click on the eye. Here, I'll, I'll move this up here, and I'll hide it. Yeah, sometimes that's weird. All right. Sometimes, you know, guys, weird glitches happen with WordPress. You know, I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> you guys saw it. So uh, there we go. So that's how you guys can uh, display this specific product structure. Also, if you guys want to reduce the number of columns, you can have, you know, two columns or three columns or even four columns and so on and so forth. Right. So that's how you guys can actually customize your actual uh, main menu page. Now, there are plugins out there that allow you to customize this even more. But um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'll introduce you all to the plugin that allows you to do that. But uh, yeah. Now, also, there are some other options here that you guys might want to configure, like the site identity. So you guys see here at the top, we have this uh, Gmail icon, right? And then right here, we have this default Earth icon. We can go ahead and select a site icon. And then I'll just go ahead and select like the, the barbecue place. And I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just throw in barbecue, you know, the BB, whatever, you know, crop the image. And then you can see here at the top left how our new uh, site logo appears. All right. So that's how you guys can add your identity to the actual, uh, I guess you want to say browser. Now, there's one more option I do want to introduce you guys to. And this is just in case you guys have trouble with your website is how to set your home page. So here we have the home page, right? Now, whatever page that you guys create and that you want it to be your home page, you'll just assign this right here as your default home page. For example, if you want the about us page to be your home page, I'll click on publish here. And if I close this, you will then see that users are brought to the about us page as our default home page, right? So this is just basically if you guys delete your home page on accidents, uh, it doesn't really matter. You guys can always assign another page to be your home page. And if you want to assign it back to the home page, you'll just go back to the theme customizer. You'll go to home page settings and then just change the home page to the actual home page and then click on publish. And then bam, you're back to square one. So pretty easy. All right, in this last section, we'll be talking about how to integrate payment gateways onto your websites. And then we'll jump into the pro aspect of this tutorial. So if you guys like what you've seen so far, you guys can keep it on your sites and you guys can have a menu. And if this works for you and you like this, then congratulations. You know, you guys can have a fully functional food ordering websites. But let me show you guys how to quickly integrate payment gateways so you can start accepting payments. Right here, let's go to dashboard and we're gonna go down to plugins and click on add new. And for the search plugins, I'm gonna type in Stripe. Now in this video, we'll be using Stripe and also PayPal. So here we go. We have the Stripe payment gateway. I'll activate Stripe and we'll go to add new one more time. And then we will type in PayPal. Here we are, uh, WooCommerce PayPal payments. I'll click on install now, and then I'll click on activate. Now, let me quickly explain Stripe and also PayPal. So this is Stripe.com. Hey, now, Stripe.com is a free service. does not cost you guys anything at all. There's also no credit check. This works for United States, Europe, and also parts of South America. All you guys need to do here is go ahead and sign up with Stripe. It doesn't cost you guys anything at all. All you guys will have to do is confirm some information. You'll need to link your bank account, and then you're all ready to start accepting credit cards with Stripe. And over here, if I show you guys the actual pricing, it's really, really cheap. Like <laughs> It's like uh, super cheap. So uh, the actual price is 2.9% per transaction, and then they charge you a 30 uh, cent transaction fee. So that's just something to consider when you're pricing your actual food. But um, this is pretty much standard in the industry. I mean, most merchants charge like 3.9%, but uh, Stripe is actually a very low uh, fee service. So I highly recommend to go with stripe.com. Uh, I'll leave a link to stripe.com in the description if you guys want to check them out. Also, we will be integrating PayPal. Now with PayPal, you guys will need to have a business account. And you guys are very lucky because PayPal has now dropped their fee and business accounts are now free. So over here, I'll go to subscribe. Now I'm in Thailand right now, guys. So if this, you know, if that text comes up, <laughs> you know, sorry. 
But uh, this is the business account that you guys will need. So just make sure that when you are signing up with PayPal, that you're using a business account. And then all you'll have to do is just click on one button in WooCommerce and it'll connect both websites. It's super easy. I'll connect mine in this video. So let's go ahead and go back to our actual uh, website. All right, so over here we have WooCommerce and we have settings. All right, now here you might wanna put in your store information, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just put in some information here, right? Uh, it was a Hualapai or Las Vegas Boulevard, right? And I will put in the city of Las Vegas. And then we're gonna put in Nevada, right? It's funny, like people are like, where's where's a Nevada, you know? And I tell them like, oh, it's Las Vegas. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now, you know? I think it's 89147. Now selling locations, um, depending on how big you are, you might wanna restrict certain countries, right? So I'm going to sell uh, to only specific countries, right? So whatever country that you're in, you might want to exclude countries outside, right? Because uh, if you're a restaurant, you only wanna sell to, you know, maybe people in your community, right? I mean, I'm assuming that I could be wrong. Here we can go ahead and enable taxes, enable coupons. And here you guys can also change the currency for your store as well. I'll go ahead and click on save changes here. All right. And then next we have products. Uh, products, you guys can uh, turn on and turn off reviews. I'm gonna do that because I just don't want people reviewing my products. You guys can also change the, you know, the weight unit, dimensions, if you guys wanna do that. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep cruising here. Tax, if you guys have tax that you guys want to charge, you guys can go ahead and charge tax, you know, or you know, you guys don't have to charge tax. Uh, here, I'll click on standard rates and I'll insert a row. Now, depending on what country you're in, uh, you guys can set any tax rate you want. So for example, United States, right? Now, um, states like uh, Wyoming don't have, or sorry, Delaware, don't have any sales tax whatsoever, right? So for Delaware, I'll just put, you know, zero. Or if you guys are in a state that uh, doesn't charge tax at all, if you can just put United States and just say we are a zero tax state, which is pretty common. There's a lot of states there that don't charge sales tax. If you guys are in another country, you guys can go ahead and, uh, you know, you guys can actually search your country code here. If you click on this, this will open all of the country codes. So if you are in Brazil, it'll be BR. If you are in uh, Chad, it'll be TD. If you are in Costa Rica, it'll be CR and so on and so forth, right? So uh, I'll just put in MX, or actually no, I think we're done, I can't. But just for examples, <laughs> uh, I'll put in MX and this would be like a you know a 3% tax rate, right? But since I am a store and I'm only selling in the United States, I'm only gonna have one, all right? So uh, when you are doing this and you're from other countries, just make sure to exclude other countries so orders don't get mixed up or you get accidental orders. Next we have shipping. Here we go. Do you guys want to charge shipping? Well, that's really up to you. You know, I don't know if you guys want to charge shipping, but if you guys do want to add a shipping fee, we can do that. There is a feature in the pro version also to add this feature, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to add uh, shipping fees really quick. So this will be US, right? United States, add a shipping method. I mean, this can also be a delivery fee, right? Now, if you guys want free shipping, just put free shipping. If you want local pickup, just put local pickup, right? But I'll do a flat rate of, uh, I don't know, gas is really expensive now, guys. I mean, I don't know. We're gonna do like $3, right? This is non-taxable. So I don't wanna tax on top of my shipping. There are some states where you can do that. I mean, that seems a little messed up, but you know, that's how it is, right? So there we go. We have a $3 flat rate of shipping. All right, pretty cool. Payments. Now let's go ahead and integrate our payment gateways that ones that we have installed. So here we have Stripe. We also have cash on delivery. If you guys want users to pay upon arriving, you guys can just enable cash on delivery and this will actually bypass all of the actual payment merchants and uh, people can just buy directly on your site, but you're not receiving a credit card, all right? So this is like an IOU. I will go ahead and activate this just for tutorial purposes, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and also activate uh, Stripe as well here. Now, all I need to do here is click on create or connect an account. And we're gonna connect our Stripe accounts. And it's really simple now, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my email here. And that's it, we are all done. Now, once you guys actually uh, connect your account, it'll bring you back to this page right here. 
and that's pretty much it. So now we can go ahead and start accepting payments. Now there is one more thing we need to do here. We need to go ahead and enable our webhook. Really simple, right? I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'll show you guys how to do this. So after we have connected it with Stripe, we now need to add in the webhook. So let's go back to stripe.com and I'm gonna sign in. Now this is the actual dashboard of Stripe. Don't panic, all right? I know there's a lot going on here, but it's really simple. All we'll do right here is click on developers. We will then click on API keys, I'm sorry, webhooks. And then we're gonna add an endpoint. All we have to do here is paste in that URL, right? This is the URL right here. We're just gonna paste it right here and we're gonna tell Stripe what we're doing with this. So we are using this to capture payments. And for the events, all I wanna do is click on charge and click on select all, right? Click on add events, add an endpoint. They will then give us this signing secret key. We will then click on reveal. I will paste this, I'm sorry, I will copy this. So right here, I'll click on edit account keys. And here we have webhook secret. All we have to do is paste it and we're done. Save live keys. All right, and at this point, your website is fully integrated with Stripe. Now, if you guys do have this disabled, uh, I guess little check mark, that's because you guys need to add a little bit more account details, right? So since I'm on a demo account, you guys will just have to make sure that you guys, uh, you know, submit all your information and your bank account and so on and so forth, but it's pretty much done. Now, the next thing that you guys will have to do here is you guys will need to uh, tell the bank who you are. So this is darylfoods.com, okay? And I'll click on save changes. All right, cool. So that's how you guys can integrate Stripe. So at this point, uh, your website is now fully integrated with Stripe. Now let's do PayPal. So here we have payments. PayPal is a lot easier actually. PayPal is one click. It's super easy with PayPal. And I actually commend PayPal. They actually made it really hard a long time ago, but this is way easier now. So for PayPal, just click on the activate button or I don't know what that is, the circle thingy or whatever. We'll go ahead and turn that on. This is the one that we wanna select here. It is the secure payments with debit and credit cards. And then we'll click on activate PayPal. All right, so now it's going to connect our account. Now, I don't know why, but here they don't prompt you to log in, but I'll go ahead and put in my email. And then they prompt me to log in because they already know I have an account. They gotta fix that part. So here I'll click on login and that's it. Our website is fully integrated with Stripe. So now when people pay, they can pay directly into your Stripe, I'm sorry, your PayPal accounts. And then, you know, you can withdraw that money to your bank account, right? So that's pretty much it. And here I will enable the PayPal uh, gateway, scroll to the bottom. Uh, but before we click on save changes, there are some things I think that you guys might wanna get rid of, like these mini carts. Uh, they're really annoying, you know, they have all these like pay now and they offer their customers credit on their website, on your website. It's really annoying. So I want to disable this on the cart, mini carts. Uh, I really want to get rid of uh, all this stuff right here as well, you know. Let's see, actually on the cart page, yeah. We'll get rid of all that. Maybe on the single page as well. Let's just take a look here. You know, they have a lot of options. They're trying to market their products to customers on your website. That's really what's going on here. So uh, now that we've actually done that, we can now go ahead and start purchasing products on your websites. But one more thing, you know, before we do that, let's make a coupon code. I know you're excited. We just made our, you know, shipping, or I'm sorry, our uh, payment gateways, but let's make coupon codes now. So here under our coupons, we can now make coupon codes. Here we can create our first coupon. And this will be like Daryl 50, right? And this is pretty simple. We have a fixed dollar amount or a percentage, right? So I wanna give a percentage of 50% off. Uh, this will allow free shipping. Here we have the expiration date. When does this expire? I'll just put it on the 30th, right? And then you have other options here like usage restriction where you can exclude specific products or specific product categories. And also you can set the number of times people can use this coupon code as well. But uh, let's just go ahead and click on publish here. And now we're ready to buy something from our store. So over here, visit sites. Let's buy something, here we go. Finally, main menu, let's, let's purchase something. Here we go. We have the salmon steak, we're gonna go ahead and buy that. And we're also going to buy the chicken wings. All right, here we have our uh, cart. I'll click on checkout. 
here we have our checkout form, right? Really nice checkout form. See, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, buy with GPay or whatever. This is all from PayPal, right? But uh, here we have cash on delivery. We have credit card. And then we also have PayPal as well. So you have a few options as far as payment merchants, right? And with PayPal, uh, people can actually pay with debit and credit card on your website. They will not leave your website. Everything stays on your website, which I really do love. Uh, this was actually a big update with PayPal, and I'm really happy they did that because before it was a total pain in the butt. All right, here we go. We have John Wilson. Uh, I don't know here. We'll, uh, let's do a 4350 Las Vegas. Las Vegas, right? And this is in Las Vegas, Nevada, right? And then here, uh, 89147. We'll put a phone number here. All right, so here we go. You know, we have the the total right here, but we have a coupon code. You guys remember that? We got a coupon code. Let's go ahead and enter it in here. Daryl 50, Daryl 50. So as of right now, the price is $48, right? But the price will be chopped in by half and we get free shipping, right? So $48, let's apply the coupon code. Voila, 25 bucks. How about that? We got a really amazing deal. Uh, we can choose to do, uh, you know, check out with credit card or uh, PayPal if you guys want to do that. But uh, just because I don't want to use my credit card on the video, I'm just going to do cash on delivery. This is essentially if users are probably going to pick up orders, right? But just be mindful about that because if they don't show up, you just made food and no one showed up, right? But I'll do cash on delivery and then I'll click on place order. And there you go. So you can see here how uh, the customer has now purchased uh, items on your websites and uh, it's going to their shipping address. Now also, once you have uh, made a sale, the customer will get notified via email and you will as well. Now also, I do wanna show you guys the actual orders, right? So over here, let's go to our dashboard and here we have WP Cafe, right? And here is our uh, dashboard. So now you guys can see how this has been updated. We have $25, right? And uh, no refunds yet. And we have one customer, right? Here is our food ordering. And then we also have our uh, reservation. So here you can see that we have the food ordering and there you go. All right, guys, well, at this point, your website is now acting as a food ordering website. You can accept payments, you can accept credit cards, you can also add products and people can add it to the menu and check out on your website. Now let's go to the next section and talk about the pro version. Hey y'all, I wanted to introduce you all to the temple kits that we are offering on my website, darylwilson.com. Now, earlier in the video, I did show you all some several pre-made templates that we have created specifically for food ordering websites. And in this part of the video, I'll show you how you can import those onto your WordPress website. Now you'll go to my website, darylwilson.com. There is a link below. Right now, this is a staging area, but by the time you're watching this, the site should be live. And you'll be brought to the main landing page. Uh, right here, you'll click on Browse Pro Templates. Now we have around like 150 template kits that we're offering on our website. We have tons of them that you guys can use on your website. Over here under search products, you'll type in food. And this will propagate a list of uh, template kits that are related to food. So we have food bike, tofu kits, uh, rancheros, burger bros, and we also do have a uh, blog that deals with food. And then we have these other ones is here. You guys can go ahead and take a look at those. But uh, for example, if you guys do want to purchase one of these um, kits, you'll click on the template kit. And when you click on the template kit, you guys can actually scroll and navigate the website right here to get a preview of the demo website. So it's really cool. I really do love this, how we added this in here. And you can go to various pages. So if you want to see like the about us page, you'll simply just go and click the about us page. Or if you want to see the shop page, you can go and navigate to the shop page to see if this is something that you guys might want to add for your food ordering websites. Now, in my personal opinion, if you are a food ordering website, I would highly recommend the templates because if you're making it from scratch, uh, many users tend to not know how to implement nice designs. So we have hired the top premium designers to create these templates all for you guys. Now, each template kit costs around $49, or you guys can purchase the all access kit, which is $399. Now, we also do have a coupon code. So the coupon code food will give you 10% off either the uh, single kits or the all access. If you guys do decide to purchase the all access, that means you get access to all of the kits on our websites and all of the future kits that we create uh, on the website as well. So you get access to tons and tons of template kits for the all access and the coupon code does also work for the all access. 
So what I'm gonna do is go to add to carts and I'll just show you guys how to import this if you guys decide to use it. All right, we have the coupon code, the coupon code food will come out to $44, all right? Uh, but for total purposes, I'm gonna use my free one that I created just to walk you guys through the process, right? So this is the one I created for free. It probably won't work when using this for uh, for demo to total purposes, right? Just to show you guys the actual uh, process. Let's say I've agreed, yada, 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 and then click on place order. Now with every purchase, I do want to let you guys know that we actually have premium support. So we've actually hired several designers to help you guys with issues. We've also created a tutorial as well to help you guys a walk through just in case you guys, you know, don't know how to do it. Uh, we have a tutorial here on exactly how to do it, but I am showing you guys how to do it as well, right? But uh, here we go, we have order complete, and then we have the Rancheros. So you'll go ahead and download the Rancheros Elementor Zip, okay? And we're gonna go back to our website. Now, in order to import this kit, we need to have two plugins installed. We need to have Elementor and Elementor Pro. Over here, we have plugins, installed plugins. So we have Elementor installed and Elementor Pro. Uh, also, if you guys are using the food kits, then you guys do need to have WooCommerce installed as well. Okay, so make sure you have WooCommerce, Elementor and Elementor Pro. If you guys do not have Elementor Pro, there is a link in the description to purchase Elementor Pro. You guys can get the Pro for around $49. The reason why we implemented the Pro in these kits is because we use a lot of premium models and we want to uh, showcase those for these template kits. All right, now over here we have themes. Now, if you guys decide to use our template kits, we actually do recommend the Hello Elementor theme. So over here under themes, we recommend the Hello Elementor. The reason why is because this is just a blank canvas and it pretty much lets the page builder do all of the work. All right, so we have Hello Elementor and those plugins installed. Now let's go ahead and import the kits. We'll go over here to the uh, Elementor and you're gonna go to tools. You'll click on import export kits and you're gonna go to import a kits. Now keep in mind, I'm on a blank website. So there is nothing on my website. Just to reiterate here, just to show you all, uh, there's nothing here, right? There's no pages, there's no nothing. The template kit will actually import everything for you automatically. So over here we have the tools. All right, import kits, start the imports. And we're just gonna drag and drop that zip file on there and we're done. Take this drag it in there, and that's it. Now it's going to say that you have to have Elementor, Elementor Pro, and WooCommerce installed. We'll just click on Next, and then click on Next as well, or I'm sorry, Import. Now this might pop up, you just need to click on Enable, that's enabling SVG files. So this process might take anywhere between one to three minutes. Now I do want to let you guys know that if you guys do have issues, sometimes there's errors with the toolkits and we understand that. We actually do have premium support. So when you guys do purchase this, you get six months of support. If you guys purchase the lifetime, I believe we are offering, I believe we're offering two years or something like that of support. So you do get a lot of help. And uh, my staff is actually uh, available 24 hours to help you guys out. You can just be like, hey, we have a problem. And then someone will go ahead and get right back to your uh, response, okay? All right, so let's go back to our website over here and I will close this and we'll just give this about one minute. All right, so that did take about two to three minutes and uh, once that's done, you click on close. Now, once you import the template kit, everything will be propagated for you automatically. The pages, the menu, the styling, the colors, everything. You click on visit and voila. You'll see that we now have a beautiful website. This is great. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You can add these products to the carts, right? It uploads automatically to your cart. All right, and we'll just keep scrolling down and you can see everything has imported successfully. So we have created all these template kits for you guys just to make the process a little bit more easier. I'll be very honest, at first we did offer some free kits, but there was just so many issues with supports and we decided to make it a certain paid service so that we can get to everyone. So I really do hope you guys enjoy these template kits. If you guys do have any questions about these kits, or you guys just want to come in my group and say hi and you love the kits <laughs> come on in come in my facebook group but uh, that's how you guys can import these template kits so let's go ahead and jump back to this tutorial all right so now that you guys got the basics of this plugin now let's talk about the pro version now i'll be honest you know if you really are running a food ordering website you probably want to upgrade to the pro it's only 49 bucks and that's a lifetime plan however if the developers do 
uh, charge more for the plugin later, guys. That's out of my control. So I really, you know, hope that doesn't happen, but it has happened before in the past. So uh, yeah, that's that. But uh, the plugin still is very cheap and affordable. And uh, I'll show you guys all of the pro features in this uh, part of the video. So with that said, let's go ahead and go back to the video. All right, welcome to the pro section. So in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to purchase and upload the pro version. I'll also be explaining the alternative options and explain why I recommend this plugin versus other options. So this is the website that you guys will need to purchase the actual plugin. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this website in the description below of this video. Uh, once you guys get here, you'll click on Get WP Cafe Now. And these are your pricing options, right? So here we have yearly plans. And these are lifetime plans. So let's say, for example, you know, you guys are just getting started out. So you guys can go ahead and purchase, uh, you know, the standard yearly, which is only $49. They also do have other plans here if you guys have multiple restaurants. But many of you probably, I don't know, maybe only have one, right? They also do offer a really cool plan, which is the lifetime. So this means you guys will only have to pay for this once and you never have to pay again. And you guys also get lifetime support and also lifetime updates, which is really, really cool. Not a lot of developers offer this because it's a really aggressive deal. Also, just a note, you guys get a 130 day money back guarantee for any reason whatsoever. So if you guys purchase the plugin and then you feel like it's just not for you, no problem, you guys can always get your money back, right? So uh, you guys can go ahead and pick between the yearly and the lifetime, right? I also do have an exclusive discount code for you guys where you guys can save uh, 30% off this order, right? So uh, right here, I'll go ahead and click on buy now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here, right? We'll go ahead and enter in my discount code from 129 and we'll put Daryl 30, right? And apply this and it now costs only 90 bucks. So it's under $100 for a lifetime plan. Now guys, if this pricing changes in the future, very sorry, there's nothing I could do about that, but uh, I'm doing my best here. So uh, yeah, I did get you guys a really good offer for this product. Now let's take a look at your alternatives, right? So we know the plugin here for a lifetime plan costs you $90. Let's take a look at some popular alternatives. So here is Lightspeed Restaurant, and this is one online food ordering uh, I guess you want to say platform that a lot of people use. And here we have a few options, right? They have the $39 plan, $119 and $289. Now guys, this is for every single month, right? And uh, here we can go ahead and see what they offer. And right away, you guys can see they also take a 2.9% uh, transaction fee for all of your orders. So this product here uh, takes no transaction fees whatsoever. So you guys are saving tons of money in the long run. And if you look at what they offer, it's the same thing, right? I mean, here they're offering advanced insights, whatever this is, but essentially um, we are getting all the features, if not more, with the actual WP Cafe plugin. Let's take a look at other alternatives, which is Upserve. Upserve is also a very popular one. Here you can see they're offering their plans at around 199 all the way to 359, right? And then here you can see what they offer, right? You know, it's funny here, you actually have to purchase more add-ons for their online ordering. So, I mean, this can probably be easily be like maybe 500 bucks a month, just depending on, uh, yeah, they have all these add-ons here. So this is how they get you. You know, they start off really like, oh, it's only 199. And then like next thing you know, you're spending like a thousand dollars a month, right? And there's no reason why they restrict this. And I never like these pricing options because uh, right here, the customer's already paying money. So what are they paying for? You know, they're paying for restricted service. I don't like that. Also here, this is Touch Bistro. Touch Bistro offers various expensive packages. So just for the online food ordering, you're paying $50 a month. And then if you want loyalty, marketing, uh, gift cards, uh, and then also if you want to integrate reservations, which we already do for free, you're going to be paying, you know, another $500 a month, whatever, plus transaction fees. So, uh, and also gift cards, you guys can actually get this for free with the WooCommerce gift card plugin. All right. So once you guys go ahead and go through the process here, you guys will go ahead and put in your personal info and so on and so forth. You'll go ahead and purchase the plugin and then I will meet you guys in the very next page. All right, cool. So you can see here how we have purchased the product right here. I'll click on view details and downloads. And here is the product that you guys need to download. So right here, this is the product and you'll go ahead and uh, click on this right here. And this will download a zip file. All right, cool. So you'll just need to go ahead and upload this to your website. So let's go ahead and go back to our website now. All right, so now that we have the pro version, now let's go ahead and upload it to our website. So let's go back over here to our dashboard. We'll then go down to plugins and click on add new. 
And over here, I'm sorry, <laughs> over here we're gonna click on upload plugin, choose the file, and then we're going to upload the uh, file that we downloaded. So it'll be a zip file like that. You click on open and then click on install now. All right, awesome. So next we're gonna click on activate plugin. The next thing we have to do is we need to activate our license. So I'll click on activate license now. You guys can find your license code actually by going to the website under the My Accounts. So right here, we purchased it from Theme Winter. And here I'll go ahead and paste in my license key. Again, you guys can go ahead and click on this link right here and find your license key. Uh, it'll be available in your account. So I'll go ahead and paste my key here. All right, cool. So once you guys activate your license key, it'll tell you that your product has now been activated on the websites. So now let's go ahead and go to our current uh, settings right here. Now, when you guys go back to your settings, you're gonna notice that you have a lot more options, right? Here we have tipping, discounts, special menus. We have reservations, styles, and a lot of other options right here. So let's go ahead and crush each one, one by one. So here we have some options like order type. Uh, for example, we can select our order type to delivery. And also we'll talk about the Google Maps a little bit later and we'll show you how to integrate that. Uh, this is actually a uh, option I really like and this is the auto complete order. This will make it so you don't have to go to WooCommerce and manually approve everything because that can be a little tedious and time consuming. So I wanna go ahead and turn on the uh, auto completes. Here you can actually select the minimum order amount, right? So for example, uh, people have to spend a minimum of $20 in order to purchase on our website. So I'll go ahead and click on save changes. Next you have the mini carts. And again, this is the same thing. You know, you have two different styling options for the actual mini cart. So you guys can go ahead and, you know, design that and stuff like that if you want to. Uh, here we have live order. This will go ahead and enable order notifications. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. This will also display a sound if you wanna do that. But that's really up to you, you know, if you wanna, you know, add that in. Here I'll click on save changes. Next, we have the tipping tab. The tipping tab essentially allows you to add tips, right? So allow tip four, we have a percentage or we have a fixed amount, right? So if you do want to uh, add that in, you can add a, a percentage or a fixed amount, uh, but that's really up to you. You know, uh, in the United States, we tip a lot. In other countries, they don't really tip as much, but tipping in America is really big. In fact, if you don't tip at a restaurant and you're with people, um, things might happen. <laughs> People might make fun of you or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll just put a, a custom tip percentage at around 10% and we'll also put a percentage here. You guys will see what that does a little bit later. All right, here we have discounts. If you guys do want to offer uh, discounts on selected categories or menus, you guys can do that. However, you guys can also do this through the default WooCommerce settings. So although it's not required to use this, um, you guys can use the WooCommerce uh, coupon codes as well. I think it's under the marketing tab, right? Where is it at? Oh yeah, it's marketing. And you know, they do the same thing pretty much. So although this isn't the pro feature, this is still available with the free version of WooCommerce. Here you guys have special menus. If you guys wanna enable special menus uh, on your website, you guys can do that. For example, let's say it's a special holiday, right? And you want to have a pop-up for a special menu that's not currently on the website, right? Or at least they don't have access to. We can go ahead and create a special menu. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and create a quick page right here, and I'm gonna use the actual elements, and I'm going to uh, drag in some products here, right? So here we have the food menu list. I'll go ahead and throw this in, right? And I'll go ahead and update this. Now, essentially what I'm doing here is uh, I just made a page, right? But I didn't add it to the menu. So no one really knows it exists, right? And let's say for example, you guys have a you know holiday special or something like that, and you want to add that in there. Uh, right here, we have the button link. I'll paste in the link for my special menu. And for the pop-up duration, we'll select this to, you know, today or, you know, the 25th or whatever. So essentially this pop-up will display a uh, you know a pop-up right here and if users actually click on the pop-up they'll be taken to the actual special menu that's not normally located on the website so let's go ahead and go to the home page here all right we're gonna go ahead and scroll down right here and there you go we now have this special holiday and if i click on the order now it then takes me to the special menu so it is an option if you guys do want to have you know a special menu that's not currently on the menu Next we have pickup. 
Now, if you guys do want to allow pickup options, here you guys have a lot more options for pickup now. So we have a pickup schedule, right? So this would actually make sense if you guys are open on specific times, right? So let's say, for example, you guys are open from 12 p.m. and you guys close at 1030 and you're closed Sunday. So you guys can go ahead and allow this as a, a pickup date. And also you can even add a pickup time as well, right? Uh, that's up to you. You know, I think you, most users would know uh, what time you're open, you know, but um, you can allow dates and times on the actual pickup options. And then over here, we have some, you know, pickup on holiday weekends. You have some exceptions and so on and so forth. I'll go ahead and click on save changes here. Now you guys will see more of this later when we do a uh, checkout on the website, right? And then also we have the same thing for delivery. Here you guys can enable delivery date and also delivery time. Like we talked about earlier, or in the beginning of the video, you guys saw my demo website where I had specific times, right? So uh, you guys can say, you know what? Uh, we'll go ahead and this is our delivery schedule, you know, 12 o'clock to 8.30 and users can select the date and time, right? And then we'll go ahead and click on save changes. This is ideal for something like cakes or something where people have to pre-schedule, right? That might make more sense, right? So that's where that option will come in hand. You guys will see it though. I'll go ahead and just give you a quick example here. I'll go to visit site and I'll go to my main menu and I'll just add something to the cart right here just for tutorial purposes. So you guys can see what we're working with. I'll go to checkout. And on this page, you'll see that we now have the option for a delivery date. And then also we have delivery time. So this is strictly up to you. If you guys do want to add this in, you guys can add a delivery time as well. And also here we can also allow a tip, you know, of 10%, you know, or you guys can uh, leave it blank and let people make their own tips if they want to do that. Or you can even offer that as a fixed amount. So that's where those options are referring to. They all happen on the actual checkout form of the websites. Let's go back over here to settings. So I showed you guys how to do uh, all of this right here. Uh, reservations. Um, there is one new feature with the reservations that I'll talk about a little bit later. These other options are pretty pretty much the same, right? Now there is a few other options that were added in the pro version, such as product add-ons. So let's say for example, you guys wanna add product add-ons. And this is very ideal for things like, um, you know, add a, make it a combo or add cheese or something like that, right? So let's go ahead and add in some new custom fields that we can add on our products. So here we have the option, right? We have checkbox, we have text, radio buttons or a drop down, right? I'll just do a checkbox. I think most people use checkbox for the actual title. I'll put, we'll put add-ons right here, add-ons. And then for the label, we'll just choose heading, right? You can also choose to hide this as well. You don't have to show the actual title, but for the option name, we'll put, make it a combo, make it a combo, right? And this will be like 250, right? Uh, here we can put something like uh, add cheese or something, right? Add cheese, and this will be like a dollar, right? Or something like that. And then I'll click on save changes. So uh, here we have these add-ons, right? Now we need to actually say, okay, well we have these add-ons right here. Um, which places or which categories do you want this to go with, right? So here I'll go ahead and say, you know what? I wanna go ahead and add this right here to the actual chicken wings. All right, and I'll click on save changes. You guys can also go ahead and add each add-on in the product itself if you choose to do that as well. Now, we have salmon steak, right? But let's just imagine here that they might want it cooked a specific way, right? Like for burgers, they might want it, you know, medium rare, medium well, and so on. So right here, I'll add a new field. And this will be a long text this time. Cooked, right? So how do you want it cooked? And then here, placeholder text, medium, and then rare or something. This is just a uh, text just to show them uh, what to put in, right? So over here, I'll go ahead and um, put the price. Well, there's no price for it, right? You don't wanna charge them extra uh, just for you know cooking a specific way. So uh, that's pretty much it. Here, I'll click on save changes. Now there's one thing I wanna mention about global add-ons is if you guys do create global add-ons, you guys can then assign those global add-ons to specific categories. However, it might be a little tricky. So if you are on a PC, you will have to actually click on the category. You will hold down the control button 
and then you'll also select the other various uh, categories. This allows you to apply these global add-ons onto various categories. Now, if you guys are on a Mac, you guys will use the command button and then you'll also hold the category and then you'll also hold various, uh, or you'll click on various categories. So I know that could be a little confusing. So if you do this, uh, these global add-ons right here will be applied to whatever you have selected uh, on the right side. So that's how you can assign specific global add-ons to products. Now these are global options, right? So these are globally applied. However, you guys will probably have to have specific products set with specific add-ons, right? Because for example, uh, cooking a uh, chicken wing would not be the same as cooking a burger, right? So over here, I'll click on edit for the salmon steak. So for example, here we have the long text, right? And this is like a uh, cooked. And I want to, I'll just put like a, we'll just leave it as label. For the placeholder text, I want to put it like medium here and also medium rare. Uh, this is required, right? And this does not cost anything whatsoever because I don't want to charge people money to cook a specific way, right? So let's just go ahead and update this and take a look at what's done right here. So here we go. Now you can see that we have the option for cooked, right? And this just lets people know how they want their steak cooked. So I'll put like medium, you know, medium rare or well done or, you know, whatever it is that they want, right? Now let's talk about actually how to add in an add-on that costs money, right? So over here we have WP Cafe add-ons and for the new fields, I'll put a checkbox here and the title is essentially what it's going to say, right? And this can be anything, right? This can be like add-ons, this can be vegetables. It can be anything that you want to, essentially what you're making right here is a category name, right? So this would be the category name and these right here would be what's in the category, right? So for example, I'll just put something here like uh, add-ons, right? And this would be something like French fries. French fries, this would be a dollar, right? We can add another option here. Uh, French fries, we'll also put like a soda, or actually not soda, like a bread. I don't know, bread, this would also be a dollar, right? And uh, maybe I want to select this as default. So that means it's automatically selecting something for the customer. Uh, if you guys do wanna go that route, you can do that. But uh, yeah, so I've essentially made uh, fr French fries and bread, and we're gonna click on update here. All right, so now let's take a look. We have salmon steak that costs $25. We now have the uh, cooked style. And then also we have the add-ons, right? This was selected by default. They could uncheck it, but right here, they can go ahead and uh, check these anytime they want right there. So that's pretty cool. So that's how you guys can add add-ons and also um, add in the field right there. Uh, I added that in the video because some people might trying to be offering steaks or something where you have to cook a specific way. And there's other various add-ons you guys can choose from, right? Now notice here how we did the checkbox, but there's also radio, there's drop down, there's other various styles. So you guys will just go ahead and just tinker around with this, see how you want to add your add-ons and stuff like that. But now that you guys know how to add add-ons, now let's talk about global add-ons, right? Over here, product add-ons. So what add-on would you want to add globally? I guess maybe like add a drink, right? I think that's probably one of the only things we can do here. Uh, but you guys, you know, you, you can get as creative as you want, right? So here we have a field, right? And for the checkbox, we're gonna put drinks, okay? And then this can be like water, right? Water, a dollar, right? We'll also add in another one, Coke. And then we'll also add in tea, all right? And all of these will cost a dollar. So uh, yeah, we can also add in this as well. We'll use a drop down menu. And then also we can go ahead and save this right here. All right, now for the drinks right here, I wanna make sure that this is actually affecting all the categories right here. So I want it to affect everything right here. And then I will go ahead and click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at our menu. So we actually now applied a global add-on and we also have independent add-ons in the actual product. So let's take a look here. We'll do the, uh, we'll do the chicken wings this time. Here we go. We have the uh, chicken wings, right? And here we have the drinks. Notice here how this displays no matter what, right? If we go to our, our salmon steak, you're going to see the additional add-ons, right? So here we also do have the drinks as well. And we also have our independent add-ons, which is cooked. And then we also have our 
uh, add-ons here that we applied in the actual product. So you guys can apply independent add-ons and also have global add-ons for your products. All right, now there's a few things also I do wanna mention about the actual pro version. When you guys install the pro version, you guys will get access to more elements from Elementor. Let me go ahead and just give you guys an introduction here and then you guys can mess around with these uh, on your own time. It's really cool. So this plugin integrates with the Elementor uh, builder. You guys might notice how there are tons of new add-ons that we can add, right? And the only way to really learn about what these do guys is just by simply trial and error, right? I have not used all these add-ons because there are quite a bit, but uh, for example, we have the uh, List Pro. This will actually display locations. Let's see here. Oh, uh, we forgot to add in images for our locations. Uh, don't worry about that. I'll show you guys how to, how to fix that, no problem. All right, but uh, we'll go ahead and scroll down here. So here we have like the list menu pro. Let's go and check that one out. Huh? What does this do? All right, we have five different styles now. Oh, five different styles, right? Ooh, that looks cool. There we go. So I like this because it sort of fits your criteria of the niche of your restaurant, right? Like, I don't know what you're trying to offer, but uh, these different modules can portray your website as like a fast food joint or something really high end, right? Uh, here we have a food menu slider. Let's check that one out, huh? A slider here, huh? Okay, it's a slider here. So this will actually slide more items uh, through your actual uh, page. So there's slider one, two. Oh, I see what it's gonna do. Maybe we can reduce the number of uh, menus here. Yeah, something like that. All right, that's pretty cool. And this will slide when you have more products. So that's pretty cool. And then also there are some various other ones as a location load more. Yeah, I'm sure there's something else here. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, you guys do get access to a lot more elements. So all you guys will have to do here is just go ahead and uh, mess around with these, right? Now, since we actually have the pro version, we can now upgrade our location section, right? So I wanna show you guys how to actually use the location section. And then we'll talk about the actual uh, reservation form, the pro one. Uh, and this one actually shows a table, but uh, we'll talk more about this after we talk about the locations. So let's click on update really quick. Now, before we talk about the locations, I wanna first set images for the locations. So let's do that. Let's go back here to home. All right, and over here we have WooCommerce, I'm sorry, products, and we have food locations. Now we have two locations, right? We have Miami and we also have Montana. Now I first wanna go ahead and select a, we can select address here, but we'll do Google Maps at the end but I first wanna go ahead and select a location, or I'm sorry, image. So we'll go ahead and put in an image here. Here is our image and I'll update that. All right, now we also have the Montana location, right? So I'll go ahead and uh, add an image here as well. And we'll also put in this one like that. And we'll click on update. Now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go back to our previous locations and we're gonna improve this. So now let's click on edit with Elementor. So now that we have the pro version of this actual plugin, we can portray our locations in a lot cleaner format now. So over here, we'll go ahead and scroll down to the list location pro and just drag it in there. Here we have a list of our locations, right? We have style one, style two, style three, and so on and so forth. You guys can also add in or exclude specific locations or add them all, right? Now, once users actually create food for those specific locations, when users click on these specific locations, it will only display the food available at those specific stores. For example, if I click on Montana right here, you will see that only the food from Montana uh, displays, right? Because we added this in the Montana uh, store. And the same thing for the Miami store, right? Remember how we only added uh, one product for the Miami store. So by doing this, you guys can assign different menus for also different restaurants. Now we can also do the same thing for our reservations. So now that we have the pro version, we can create a more enhanced version of the actual reservation form. So over here, I'll go ahead and just get rid of this. And over here we have, uh, we have the visual table, but we'll do that in the next section. But uh, we'll just go ahead and just drag in like the pro version, right? And this looks a lot nicer, you know, we have, uh, there's only one style at the current moment, I'm sure they'll make more, but this is a lot nicer here. You know, it has this really step 
step-by-step -step booking style, and I do like that. And this can now be your new reservation form. So I do like this a lot more. I think it's a lot more cleaner and nicer, right? So that's how you guys can create a more modernized version of the reservation form once you guys upgrade to the Pro. Now let's talk about something more advanced. Let's talk about how to create a visual table here that you guys can use uh, on your reservation form. So let's go to our dashboard here. We'll then go to WP Cafe and click on Tools. We are now going to enable the table layouts. The table layout essentially allows you to create a layout of your restaurant. So now that I've done that, we'll click on the table layout. Now with this table layout, what you guys can do here is you guys can create a visual table. Now there's various websites you guys can use to find like how to make a visual table. Uh, I'll just give you guys an image right here you guys can use to follow me with. I'll leave it in the description. I'll go ahead and upload that file now. Uh, I use something like this right here. It's just like a new project, you know, just something that I can, you know, display so you guys can kind of get the idea in point. So once we actually do that, uh, we can then see that we have uh, options, right? We can add a quarter table, a chair, a text, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, right here, I'll add in a corner table. I'll add in a chair and another chair, right? And then a round table. Right, and then we'll throw in a chair here and then another chair. Now you guys will need to make the chairs touch the table. If the chairs don't touch the table, the plugin doesn't recognize it. All right, so uh, once that's done, I'll click on save changes. All right, cool. Now one thing also, uh, they give you a little notification here. So you just need to make sure that the modules work with single slot reservations. So this will be under the settings tab. This is an error that I was getting when I first used the plugin. Over here under the reservation tab, under the schedule, you just wanna make sure this is checked off, okay? If this is checked on, then the actual form will not display. So now that we actually created that little, uh, that little chart, we can go ahead and now assign it. You guys will also need to make sure that you selected a schedule. If there is no schedule as well, uh, this will not work. All right, so here is the reservation form, but I wanna go ahead and add in the visual form. Now, this is just an option. You guys don't have to do this if you guys think that's too much. Um, yeah, you don't have to do this, but I just wanna show how you guys can do it. So here we have the visual table, right? This is the visual table reservation. And uh, I'll go ahead, I think I'll have one style, right? Yeah, one style. I'll click on updates, and then I will view the page. All right, so let's go ahead and run through this. All right, we're gonna select a date. Here we have the time, right? Nine to 9.30. Obviously you guys would select the dates in the actual settings, okay? So whatever it is that you guys want to select the schedules, you guys will need to go ahead and select it there. And then here we have our available seats. So I'll go ahead and click on these two seats. And then I will put in my name, right? And then, you know, whatever. Uh, bring a booster seat. And then I'll click on book a table and then I'll click on confirm booking. So that's it. So once you guys have done this, um, it will then be approved and then it will display in your email and our reservation list right here. So once you guys get reservations, they will all be displayed right here. And then all you have to do right here is you just have to approve the booking. We'll go ahead and say, all right, we'll go ahead and approve this and confirm. And you can see here, bring a booster seat and I'll click on update. Once you guys confirm this, uh, they will then get an email notifying them that you have now approved the actual booking. So yeah, that's how you guys can add a visual table to your current website. You guys with me still? You guys are doing really, really good. The amount of features this plugin has is really amazing. I gotta be honest, we've only been scratching the surface. There's a lot more you can probably do with this plugin once you guys get in the nitty gritty. So lastly, I wanna talk about the Google Maps API. And I think that's pretty much it for the pro version, right? There are some more features that I'll talk about a little bit later, like the uh, tracking driver. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the actual Google Maps API. Now, it doesn't really do much. I'll be very honest. All it really does is link the actual visitor to the closest store available. If you do want that option, I'll just show you how to do it. Here we have the Google Maps API. Uh, here's Google Maps, right? You guys will need to make an account. And once you guys are here, I'll leave this in the description. You'll then click on Get Started. Now I have tons of Google Maps APIs uh, right here. We have APIs. Now there are various APIs to choose from, but what you guys can do is just go over here and click on the documentation and it will take you exactly where you need to go once you're logged in. Just click on Next. 
It's the Maps JavaScript API. That's the one you, that you guys will need. So if you are a developer, you'll click on this one right here, and this is the API that you're gonna use. However, for most beginners, you're just going to click on create a new API key and just cl keep clicking okay. <laughs> that's, really, uh, that's really what we do here. We just keep clicking okay. Here we go, we got the API key, and then you'll just paste it in here like that, save changes, and you're done. Now, when users come to your websites and you allow locations, it will go ahead and uh, let them know of the closest place available, right? So that's pretty much it. And that's really all it does. So let me go ahead and make sure I have talked about all the options, right? We talked about reservations, uh, styling. You guys can choose to style your, you know, the site however you want. We have the general options. We're not gonna go through Zapier and Pavly just because those are very niche integrations. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, here we have tools, all right? Tools are all set, available short codes, uh, table layouts. Uh, oh, looks like we have more uh, codes right here. Now, again, these are optional and these are if you guys are not using the Elementor page builder. So if you guys are using like Divi or Brizzy or something like that, uh, you can display the elements that Elementor use right here with short codes instead, okay? Uh, that's a pretty big one. You know, sorry if I missed out on that. If you guys are using different page builders like Gutenberg or something, uh, also the same thing for reservation. You guys can select the visual table uh, using this specific short code. And again, this is for people who are not using Elementor. All right, but um, yeah, that is pretty much it for the pro version. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now let's go ahead and buy something here. Let's just, uh, for all time's sake here, let's go ahead and purchase something right here. I'll purchase the chicken wings. All right, we got our products. We'll do a quick checkout. Delivery date, delivery time, 12.15, and uh, we will throw in a tip. You know, what you guys should do here is, why don't you guys actually ask the developer uh, if they should put this in a better area? Because I don't like the, how this is at the bottom, you know, and I'm sure they can add it in an update in like two seconds. It's really fast. And there we go. We'll do cash on delivery, and voila. So congratulations. Uh, the customer has now been notified via email, and you have also been notified via email that you have a new purchase. So that is pretty much it for the pro version. Now, also for those of you who want to customize your shop page, uh, there is a plugin that you guys can use. I'll just introduce you guys to this plugin. I'm not gonna go through it because uh, obviously the video can get a lot longer. You'll type in shop engine, and this is the plugin that you guys will need. This plugin here allows you to customize and design your actual uh, product page, right? So if you guys don't like the defaults and you think it's ugly, uh, no problem, you guys can use this plugin right here and this will allow you to uh, fully design your actual product page. So I'll go ahead and go over here to shop engine and here we have builder templates. Now it's pretty simple, right? Like just like we have designed the site earlier, here you can create a template for your actual products, right? So here you can see that there's this product. We'll just go ahead and click on this one right here and click on edit with Elementor. And what you guys can do here is you guys can create custom templates for your products using this plugin. All right, so here's the actual product. And what you guys can do is you guys can actually drag and drop elements. Like for example, if you want the add to cart down here instead, uh, you can move the add to cart and then delete that one. But yeah, they have a lot of other elements you guys can use. I just wanted to introduce you guys to this plugin because some of you might want to adjust the product page, but I don't really want to make a whole video on it because this video can get quite long. So I just want to introduce you guys to that plugin just in case you guys do want to customize your product page. Now in this next section, I'll be showing you how you can add drivers and update your customers about where their orders are and also show them where the drivers are. All right guys, welcome to step five. So in this part of the video, I'll be introducing you all to the advanced features of this plugin. Now in this part of the video, I'll be showing you guys how to add SMS notifications for your customers to give them updates on where the driver is. I'll also be showing you guys how to enable tracking. You can actually just get their phone and see where the driver is in real time. It's really incredible. Uh, if you guys have ever used DoorDash or even uh, Grab, like in Asia, uh, this is the same exact thing. It's really incredible. So I'll walk you guys through on how to set this up for your food ordering website. So let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to section five. So in this part of the video, I'll be explaining more of the advanced features that you can add to your food ordering website. In this part of the video, I'll be explaining how to add live SMS notifications to your customers and also GPS tracking. Now this website is fully integrated with ShipDay, so I'll give you guys a live demo of exactly how this looks from the website point of view, from the driver point of view, and also from the customer's point of view. But let me just give you guys a quick little demonstration. So uh, your customers right here, 
they'll be notified via text message and they can click on a link and they can see where the driver is. They can also call the driver and also text the driver as well. I mean, with this website, you guys can even make your own Uber Eats or your own DoorDash. Like there's really no limitations here, but we're just gonna imagine that we're just one restaurant, right? We don't wanna get too crazy. So let me go ahead and give you guys a live demonstration of how this works and how uh, you can expect to see how your you know restaurant operates and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and buy something. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase something here uh, on this website, right? I'll go ahead and add this to the cart, add this to the cart, the salmon steak, and also the roasted chicken. You know, we'll add, we'll add two roasted chickens, all right? We're hungry. All right, so it's $100, right? 100 bucks, and I'll click on checkout. All right, and then of course, your customers can select a delivery date and time if they choose to do that. Uh, but that again is up to you. That's, you know, you can disable this in the options if you guys want. Obviously, I should have put my business hours. <laughs> that would have made more sense, right? And then here they can go ahead and place the order. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my address right here. I'll just throw in some random address, right? Pasadena. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and place the order and then I'll show you guys exactly how this works. So let's go ahead and click on place order here. All right, so your customer has just made an order on the actual website. Now let's go over here to our ship day account and you guys can see how this automatically has um, added in a order. You guys also heard that little bell right there. So you don't have to be looking at your screen. This will actually make a noise. So it'll notify you pretty much from anywhere, right? So here we go, we have the order, right? And we first need to assign this order to a driver, right? So here I'll click on assign. And then here we have a driver. Daryl is online. So we know that Daryl is online here. And I'll click on Daryl, all right? And then I'll go ahead and say, you know what? This is ready for pickup, right? So there we go. Now let's go ahead and show you guys my phone. And then we'll also show you what this looks like from the customer point of view. And I'll share both screens at the same time so you can see what this looks like from, you know, a real time, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my phone here. All right, here we go. All right, so we have uh, one order is waiting, right? I'll click on the order. And here we can see the order, right? I'll click on accept the order. You can see right here in the portal how this has automatically changed to started, okay? So uh, there we go, it started, right? Now let's say, all right, well the driver, you know, the driver actually picked up the order, right? So we're gonna mark this on its way now. So I'll click on mark as on its way. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how the customer has been notified. So let me show you guys my text messages. All right, here we go. So your customer has just received a random text uh, saying, thank you for ordering, here is your delivery. So let's click on this link right here. And look at that. So you can see here how the customer made an order from Pasadena and how it's being delivered right here to uh, Los Angeles. They can also go ahead and call the driver, send them a text message. They can also get updates right here. So they can see that um, they're driving to pick it up and you know they've got the order and so on and so forth. And then right here, they can also see uh, how much they have paid and stuff like that. So they'll be fully notified of every update, right? Which is really, really cool. Now, of course, once the driver starts driving, this will actually show them exactly where the driver is. However, I am in Thailand right now, so I can't show you guys what this looks like because I'm not physically there. But uh, let's just imagine here that the uh, order has been placed, right? So let's go back over here to ship day. And I'll go ahead and mark this as complete, right? So I'll go ahead and mark this as complete. We'll click on confirm. Now a signature is required. So I'll go ahead and put in a signature here, all right? The customer will have to sign off saying that they have received the order and they'll click on save. And then right here, they'll click on complete the order. Now watch what happens to my ship day account once I click on this. All right, you guys can see it has disappeared, right? So the actual order there has disappeared. Now watch what happens here to my actual ship day account, right? So I'll go ahead and complete the order and you guys can see how it disappeared. And it disappeared because it is now in the recently completed and here is the order right here where they can get more information about the actual order, right? So here you can see everything that it was signed uh, and everything. So it's a really simple process, guys. It's, a, it's an awesome uh, integration and it keeps your customers on the loop of exactly what's going on. So let me show you guys how to integrate all this to your website. All right, so let's do this. First, we'll go ahead and install a plugin that we need to connect our website with shipday.com. So let's go over here to our plugins and we'll click on add new right here. All right, and for search plugins, we're gonna type in shipday. 
All right, this is the plugin that we need right here. It is ship day. So just make sure you guys install this plugin. Uh, ship day is actually very popular. It's used on a lot of other platforms and they have just merged over to WordPress. And uh, you know, this is a new plugin. So uh, they already have almost a thousand customers. So it is a very popular plugin that people are using more and more for food ordering. All right, cool. Now, uh, now that we've done that, we need to now set an API key. So you guys will need to go to shipday.com over here and you guys will need to make an account, right? So you'll go to shipday.com and you'll click on sign up free. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign up with you guys and just imagine that I'm a customer for the very first time. So I'll go ahead and put in my email address and password. All right, and I'll go ahead and click on one more step. Now I'll need to put in my information, right? Like the city, the contact person name and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and fill this out. All right, so now it's gonna go ahead and create my account for me. Here, we'll just go ahead and put in some more information. So I want to offer deliveries for my own business. So I'm a seller. Uh, do you want to use commission third-party delivery services like DoorDash, Drive, and Uber? Uh, no, I'll use my own drivers, but you guys always can if you guys want to do that. But I'll just put no, I'll use my own drivers. And I'll just go ahead and fill this information out. And then I'll click on start your 30-day free trial. This is a paid service, but even like the monthly fee is like 20 bucks or something. It's, it's pretty low. It doesn't cost a lot of money. All right, cool. So here we go. And uh, here we can go ahead and test out some of these orders right here. All right, so once you guys actually make an account, you guys will need to have the application. Now this is only for your drivers. Your customers do not need to download the application. They'll get a link that'll notify them automatically. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the actual app on the screen right here, but you guys can just scan this QR code and this will take you directly to the actual application, right? So I'll go ahead and click on and get started. Now uh, here we can, uh, you know, this is your general dashboard, right? This is where you can see a bunch of information and stuff like that. Now, all we have to do here is we have to integrate ship day with our websites. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on integrations and uh, we're going to go ahead and integrate this with WooCommerce. Now this is all we need right here is this API key. So I'll go ahead and click on show API key and we'll go ahead and copy this key right here. We'll then go back to our website and paste it in. So let's go back over here to our websites. And we're going to go to WooCommerce and go to settings. We'll then go over here and click on ship day. All right. Now we do need to add in a few options right here. So we do need to have the rest API key and we also need to have the ship day uh, API. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the uh, ship day API and click on save changes. Now we also need to integrate the uh, rest API. I'm gonna go ahead and close this notice here. Elementary's owners are really annoying. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, integrate the rest API. So right here, I'll click on click here. This just takes you to the advanced tab. That's really all it does. And all we have to do here is we need to create a new rest API key. So for description, I'll put in ship day. And for the permissions, I'm going to select read and write, and then click on generate API. Now you guys need to actually copy this and put this somewhere on your computer because once you live this screen, uh, these will no longer be available to you. So you need to make sure that you guys actually save this and don't leave this page. Because uh, again, it, it will actually uh, be hidden and you guys will be forced to make another API. So what I did here was I opened up a second tab right here and you guys can do this as well. So just go to your ship day tab under a new tab. So it's the same website under two tabs and then just copy and paste it and that's it. So right here, I'll copy the consumer key, paste this here. And then also I will copy the consumer secrets and I will also paste that right there. And then you can choose to sync previous orders. So any orders that you made before ship day, you can also integrate those as well, but I'm not going to do that. So here I'll click on save changes and that's it. You're done. So your website is now fully integrated with ship day. So let's go back over here to ship day and let's go to our, uh, We'll go to our orders right here. All right, now these are just test orders. So uh, these are obviously uh, not real, right? So we'll just go ahead and delete all these right here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna have to do is that we're going to now add a driver. So right here under drivers, click on drivers and then click on plus new driver. Here you guys need to put in the name of the driver, their phone number, their email, and then the driver will be prompted to download the application. Once they download the application, they can then uh, receive orders from your website. Here we have the original driver. This is like just the one that we set by default. So we'll just use this one for now. But uh, for those of you who are getting started out, you probably want to assign uh, a driver for your actual order. So 
So now that we've integrated this, let's go ahead now and test this out, right? So the driver has downloaded the application and we're now going to run a live transaction and show you how all this works. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, the website's pretty much fully integrated at this point, right? Let's go ahead and test it out here. All right, so we're gonna go to our main menu here and we're now going to order both of these, right? All right, and then I'll click on checkout. All right, here I'll go ahead and uh, put in a delivery time, right? And then we'll scroll down. All right, and then your customer will go ahead and input their information right here, all right? So they'll go ahead and put in their phone, uh, their zip code, their email address. They will go ahead and pay with you know credit card or PayPal or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all this information out and then I'll go to the actual uh, place order and then I'll meet you guys on the very next page. Now let's go ahead and go back to our ship day account right here. And right away, you guys can see how this automatically propagated uh, onto the actual ship day account. And then just like before, you know, we can just go ahead and assign this to our driver, right? Now, Daryl Wilson right now is offline. So just make sure that the actual driver has the application and they went online. All right, so I went ahead and I turned on the app. I'll click on go online here. All right, so Daryl Wilson is now online. And as you guys can see here now, uh, I'm waiting for orders. All right, cool. So now you guys can see that Daryl Wilson is now online. He's available because I just turned on my app. And right now, you know, on my phone, there's no orders right here. So we're just waiting for orders to be assigned. I'll go ahead and assign this order here to Daryl Wilson. And right away, you guys can see how on the app, it has notified us of a uh, an, an order right here. So it's over here, right? Waiting orders. And there it is, $48. We'll click on accept. Okay. And uh, here, this is now ready for pickup. So Daryl Wilson, Daryl Wilson can now uh, pick this up right here. Let's, let's take a look here. All right, and uh, we can mark it on its way. And then also the status has been changed to on the way. Uh, also, let's go ahead and check the text message to make sure this is working. You guys can see that I just got a text message here at the bottom. I'll click on this little app or this little link right here. And uh, let's see what we got going on. All right, so obviously you guys can see I'm in a different country. So, <laughs> you know, it shows my it shows my real life location. See how it's uh, it's live tracking. So this does work. You know, it's just that I'm in a different location. But uh, look at that, 600 hours. But uh, yeah, it's it's live tracking, right? So it shows exactly where I am, and it shows where the order is. Here we can select the order on its way. They can call Daryl, message him, and also uh, they can see the actual order, right? So uh, let's go ahead now and complete this order. So let's go back to the application. So uh, mark this as complete. We'll confirm this. And uh, Daryl must go ahead and sign this. So I'll go ahead and sign this bad boy right here and uh, complete the order. All right. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? And then here we have the order and it just disappeared. I didn't edit the video. Uh, recently completed and voila. So that's it. As you guys can see, it's a great user experience. The customer can get notified of everything. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot more this website can offer guys, to be honest. They have a lot more features and I am barely scratching the surface, uh, like under this dispatch section, uh, orders, drivers, maps. Uh, there's a lot of really cool options here that you guys can go through and check out. I would probably contact their sales representative I'll be honest guys, they know a lot more about this app than I do. I've only been using this app for about a week. Uh, I'm not a professional at it, you know? So uh, you guys might wanna contact their sales team to get a website can really offer for you guys. So now let's talk about the actual pricing for this application. Here, I will click on pricing. So it looks like we use the professional plan and this starts at $29, right? And I think that's pretty much all you guys need. There are some other things that you can add in like the age uh, verification on delivery. But I mean, I don't think that's necessary because you can just ask the driver how old they are or you can ask to see their ID if you guys are delivering alcohol or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure about that, you know, as far as legalities, every state is different, you know, and it's really complex. But uh, also you guys do get custom branding. Ooh, so that's actually a pretty cool one right there. Uh, you guys get custom branding with the actual uh, premium service. So that's just something to think about if you guys want to add that for your food ordering websites. Now I did want to give you guys a quick announcement. This is my part one of my part three series of my food ordering website tutorials. So in this video, I showed you guys how to create a food ordering website, right? In the next video, I'll be showing you how to turn this food ordering website into a multi-vendor food ordering website. 
With this website, users can come to your website, register, and sell their products on your website. You can then take a commission of the sale for whatever sold on your website. For example, we have uh, this product right here sold by Daryl's Food. This one right here is sold by Jenny's, and this one and this one is actually sold by us. So with this website, users can uh, come to your website, list their products, and sell uh, anything they want on your website. This is very similar to Uber Eats and Grab, where you have like, you know, this could be McDonald's, this could be Subway, and so on and so forth. Uh, we are using a premium theme, and I will talk more about this video a little bit later. It's coming out in about one week. Right now, me and the developer, we're adding in all the necessary features for you guys, just to make sure that when it's launched, that it's fully uh, functional and ready to go. So I'll follow up with this video, and this will be my number two video of how to create a multi-vendor food ordering website. In the third video, I'll be showing you how to integrate a POS system. A POS system stands for a point of sale. With this application here, you guys can actually uh, have staff and they can uh, order within your actual store. For example, here we have our food items, right? And this actually syncs up with your current website. Here we have categories, and then we also have standalone products. So let's say, for example, we want to you know, add in maybe the salmon steak. I will add in the salmon steak. And then over here we have meats, which are categories. I'll click on meats. And then we also have the categories here. So I'll just go ahead and say, you know, I wanna, I wanna add in the roasted chicken. And then I will click on checkout. The users can pay with cash or card. You can also uh, add every customer. So you can make, you know, they can make an account and all that stuff. But uh, right here, I will click on cash and click on enter. And then if you have another customer, you just click on new sale right here. And then you just go through the process again and just, you know, add everything as usual. So it's a very convenient system. You guys can add this on an iPad or some sort of device in your store where your staff can just go ahead and quickly enter this in. You can then take payments inside of your store. This also integrates with actual terminals, right? So this will actually require a terminal. So you guys will need to have some sort of terminal in order to accept credit cards. There are various ones to choose from. These ones right here are premium terminals. Uh, there are some that Stripe offers and they're like, you know, they're really cheap and free. They're like 30 bucks. These ones can get a little bit more expensive, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later. And then also for those of you who are selling on a much larger scale, you guys can actually uh, get kiosks, which are these really nice kiosks. You guys have probably seen these at McDonald's, right? Where you can actually uh, order these. Um, you know, you, you can order food right from McDonald's and that's exactly what McDonald's offers is kiosks like that. So I will be covering POS and the hardware in my third video. So uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe. Those are gonna be some really awesome videos. I hope you guys like what you saw. And let's go back to the video. But again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that I brought you guys a lot of value here and helped you guys out with your food ordering websites. If you guys have any questions or if something that I missed, let me know in the comments below. And if I get enough comments regarding that same question, I will make a follow-up video to this video. My name is Daryl Wilson. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, congratulations on your food ordering website. See, I told you guys all this stuff was super easy. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If there's anything that I missed, also let me know. If there were features that you guys saw uh, that were not in the video, it's probably because they added those features in later. Uh, that does happen quite a bit. So don't panic, you know, the video is not outdated, but these plugins are constantly being updated as well. But uh, let me know how I did. I really hope this helped you guys out. There are a lot of expensive alternatives out there like Toast or Upserve where they charge people like $200 a month plus transaction fees. It's crazy, you know? So this plugin definitely will fit your budgets. But uh, yeah, let me know how I did. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you guys in the next video. Take care.